Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to No Code Rumble. This is our official demo day. After weeks of development, after weeks of creating and figuring out how to build eight unique products with makers around the world, we're going to finally show you what we were up to all this time and also demonstrate just how powerful No Code tools really are. Each one of these products are unique. They're in completely different industries. And just the fact that we were able to actually develop them so efficiently during one of the weirdest times in history <laughs> really is a testament uh, to what's possible today. We have all our Rumblers here with us. We have some of our amazing sponsors with us too. The format we're going to be using for the Rumble, uh, for the demo day, is going to be to go from city to city, one by one, uh, giving each Rumbler a chance to share their vision with you. And we can't wait to get your feedback as well on YouTube. Thank you for your patience. We had a little bit of technical issues in the beginning. Um, and what we're going to do is ask some questions at the end of each presentation. So we'll spend the first few minutes looking at their product. I'll share the product on my screen uh, so all you can see and uh, hopefully uh, get your feedback along the way. So let's start with San Diego. Corey Haynes, we started off with you. You were the first product to get completed uh, last month. And what I'm going to do is allow you to share the vision. I'll share the screen. We can go straight into swipe files. Perfect. Sounds good. Yep. Let's clean this up. Here we go. Let's go into presentation mode. Swipe files. Beautiful. Take it away, Corey. All right, cool. Well, thanks everybody for watching and tuning in with us. Uh, it's gonna be fun. I'm personally really excited to see everyone else's projects and honored to be able to go first. So my name is Corey. By day, I am the uh, head of growth at Barometrics. By night, I make swipe files and a bunch of other stuff. Um, swipe files is really born out of kind of scratching my own itch, if you will, being a marketer, uh, kind of having to feel like I'm always starting from scratch or having to reinvent the wheel with a new page or a new campaign, emails, ads. Um, in marketing, you have to constantly churn through different projects. You're always looking for the latest, the greatest. Um, so really, Swipefells is supposed to be a curated library, as you can read there, of marketing copyright examples, but also with detailed breakdowns of what makes them great as well. Because what I found was that there's a lot of kind of curated libraries or places where you can go to find you know little uh, ads, landing pages, examples, right, to pull from, but then there's no explanation of why they're good, right? And so uh, it's kind of like, you know, if you're going to say something's good and then not say why, is it really good at all? Um, so the thought here is just to curate the best, not to curate everything, um, and so that you never have to start from scratch again. You'll have uh, examples to pull from for every single need, whether it's a Facebook ad, an affiliate landing page, um, a welcome email, an onboarding email, an upsell email, and across all sorts of industries. So SaaS, e-commerce, digital products, marketplaces, mobile and desktop apps, uh, services. Uh, I think that's all of them, right? But the, there's a lot of different types of content there. Um, so I think when me and Sako sat down to really think through kind of like what this was going to be and, uh, and the experience of the website as well, some of the things we really wanted to do was uh, basically like stay far away from like a blog post kind of format or like basically any other content site that's out there for the public. Um, and so what we did was we tried to really make each post, each teardown, each example um, stand out and look like something that was, uh, uh, that was different from the rest, right? Because we don't need any more blog posts. We don't need any more kind of vague rambling uh, post. It was basically just supposed to be a way for me to be able to tear down piece by piece, literally like uh, crop by crop of each image or each example of what makes it great. So um, if you can see here, this this first example, it's of Basecamp. This is kind of like my free version. I'll get to kind of the pricing and the membership side of things here in a second. But so if you click on that, yep. it should work. Let's, let's hope and pray. It worked for me earlier today, but... Um, so this is a landing page example, right? And what I'm trying to communicate here is that, hey, Basecamp, a well-known SaaS company, they actually just repositioned their landing page for the whole COVID-19 situation. And so here's what they did and here's why it's really cool, right? So we start with 
quick explanation, a couple of tags for categories, and then we have a full screen shot of uh, the entire page, which uh, isn't too long, right? But we can see uh, basically a glimpse of everything before we start getting into the details. And then now I start tearing it down, right? Now I start piecing it apart. Um, and so I'll show a little bit of like what the old version looked like, and then I'll go, you know, basically uh, line by line. Hey, look at this header, look at this social proof with the reviews that they use. Here's what they change. Here's why it's interesting. That way you can actually take something from it and say, oh, okay, this is interesting. If I wanted to reposition my company or my landing page for a COVID-19 situation or any other kind of world event later on, here's something I can pull from in the future. And there's usually about, um, I would say like five to 15 of these little kind of um, breakdowns or I still need the, the terminology here, but basically kind of uh, these sections, right, for each one. So it's not too long, not too short. Try, try to keep it about a five to 10 minute read each, but that way you get, again, a detailed explanation of why it's great that we can take a free own project. Awesome. And so how the pricing works is that you can see here that this is the this is basically a free content for everyone to see. And it's under that URL of slash latest slash file. Um, and how it's going to work is that every new uh, teardown that I publish will be completely free. So anyone can uh, see it. They don't have to sign up for anything. They can literally just go to that page, latest slash file uh, every time and see the latest one. But if you want to unlock the full library or if you want to reference one that was published earlier, then you have to sign up for a membership. And so I've created this membership site through Webflow, which is what we designed it in, member stack to take the actual uh, kind of subscriptions and also lockdown content behind a paywall. Uh, Jetboost with my friend Chris Spags here on the call with me as well, uh, which helps me filter and basically sort and categorize and search all the um, teardowns because it gets pretty lengthy. And then I have other ones like ConvertKit, uh, Zapier, a few others here to make the experience a little bit better. But basically, you can start monthly, annually, or lifetime. And then once you do that, you have full access to everything. Um, and uh, then I keep adding on to the library, right? And basically, over time, it gets larger and larger and more valuable and more valuable for the user. Fantastic. Let's go back to the landing page, Corey. Um, I really liked this approach of having a very clear kind of CTA here call to action here saying, are you interested in web pages? Are you interested in emails? Or are you interested in ads? So these are like the primary categories you want to focus on, right? You don't want to go into anything else. It's like very focused on, on uh, what you're offering. I really love that. Um, and, exactly, over here, yeah. and here you're also featuring some of the latest, which at this point I would have to sign up for to see, correct? Correct. Yeah. So these are just a couple of examples. Um, and basically it's kind of giving you a glimpse into what's kind of locked down a little bit or what's, uh, you know, so this, you can see the reposition landing page is the newest one, right? But before that, there's a couple others. And if you want to see those, then you have to sign up. Gotcha. Um, and then we have the pricing again. And I like what you did here with the get started and then get it for life. Um, I like that, you know, all in one. And I noticed you also added team packages, which is really cool. How's that going to work? Yeah, so team packages, I'm basically just going to do uh, manually myself. If someone is interested, they can just email and then, you know, get their whole team on it, their whole company on it. You know, there's a lot of like marketing teams out there who might want to use their, uh, you know, personal development or career development stipend on something like this. Got you. So let's talk about the process a little bit, Corey, before we move forward. Um, I think it's really interesting how, like, cutting out all the noise, right? The, I think both of us were so annoyed with the amount of noise that went into most of these products we were looking at. We were like, can we just, let's just call it nonoise.com. <laughs> like, let's just, what would we have there, right? And I think the product itself, it, it, there's kind of this consistency across all of the products in the Rumble, um, where all of us just wanted to say, like, I have this idea of a product and I don't want there to be anything else. So how do you see this progressing over the next 12 months? as a platform, because we don't want this to just be a blog, like you said. So where do you see this going like by the end of the year? Yeah, great question. Um, as of, it, it's great because, you know, as I've been talking with a couple of other rumblers, um, as I've been talking with other marketers and just really thinking through the whole process of, again, what would I want trying to scratch my own itch? Um, I'm definitely going to be expanding the content library, right? So a lot of it is very SaaS focused because that's an easy place for me to start personally. 
um, later on. And, and actually pretty soon, I've already started a little bit, but I'm going to be collaborating with a lot of copywriters and other marketers in the space. Because again, it's all about the context of, hey, why did you use these words? Or how did you create this landing page? And not just taking it at face value of what I see, but what went behind the scenes and actually creating that. So I'll be collaborating with a lot of other people as well. Um, I'm also going to be experimenting with some other content formats. So I can envision things like playbooks, which will be like uh, kind of funnel teardowns of like sequences. So going from a page or maybe going from an ad to a page to an email, maybe to another page to sign up. Right. So showing like the whole kind of uh, journey for a customer from uh, from a certain point. Um, I can also imagine things like a private podcast, even a community for marketers. Uh, there's a couple of uh, itches I want to scratch there as well, but basically just having a place where we can share things that other we can't share anywhere else. Again, there, actually, there's a lot of noise in marketing communities, which is funny you mentioned that. And so uh, locking it down to something that's more curated or people more serious about it, um, I think is a something that I personally have been itching for for a few months myself. And then the private podcast really the thought mm -hmm. there is um, that there's a lot of podcasts that are kind of, uh, I mean, they're, they're also thinly veiled uh, marketing hacks, right? They're just, uh, let's just lob over some softball questions to a guy about something that I saw that he did, but there's not a lot of research behind it. There's not a lot of things that are actually shared. I actually uh, posted on Twitter yesterday about what's missing a lot of marketing podcasts. So I really want to get into like details, strategy, again, what went behind this? What were the results? How did you think through this yourself? Um, but yeah, to sum up, new content, uh, more content, community, and private podcasts. Fantastic. Um, something I also want to point out, everyone, is we've changed the format of the no-code rumble a little bit uh, this week. We realized that building the product from the ground up is actually not the hard part. The hard part is actually positioning correctly, getting feedback from the community, testing it properly, seeing, you know, iterating based on the feedback we receive. Um, and we need to make sure that all the rumblers have a chance to do that. So just, you know, building it in Webflow, releasing it and saying, hey, we did something. You know, there, that's no different than what Michael and I were talking about when we first got excited about working on this. Uh, we're uh, sponsoring the Rumble and so on. Uh, where, you know, we, we just decided to discuss that, you know, everyone's just releasing tools and web pages and experiments. So like, how can we encourage people to create products, real products? And that means there has to be a process. No matter how easy the tools become, Corey, I think you and I both are very passionate about this as well. It's like, no matter how easy no code is, building a product is always going to be hard, <laughs> especially yeah. when you such a saturated market now uh, with so many products. Now you have to think even harder about how you're going to position it. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that process for you, because I think like we spent, I would say probably the first couple of sessions building swipe files, but then after that, most of the time was actually just figuring out the content, right? Figuring out that process of like, well, how do I tell this story and what would my user be interested in? So what was some of the challenges you faced during that setup? Because in your case, we decided that we don't actually want to go with a full custom approach. We used a base. We used a really interesting template approach for this. So actually building was not the biggest challenge. Um, integrating member stack and Jetboost was very interesting. Guys, go definitely check out that session. That was great. We had Chris on. We had Natick from member stack, which is fantastic. Um, but what was it like actually focusing more on the experience of building swipe files? Yeah, I think the the kind of two cruxes were one, like the preview for each uh, teardown, because again, I didn't want to just list it like a blog post. In fact, I still kind of have that a little bit towards the bottom of the page with some of the previews on the latest content. But really, I wanted a, a, uh, a new way to show, hey, here's um, here's what you can expect. Here's what you're, you're maybe looking for. Ways that also allow for Chris's jet boost to like search for it, right? So I'm, in, I'm including keywords about uh, Basecamp's repositioned landing page, uh, you know, that takes advantage or that, um, uh, that speaks to the COVID-19 situation. And then I'm saying they achieved this by, right, with the three bullet points, mm -hmm. also including some keywords there about, uh, you know, using social proof. So if you wanted to see any uh, uh, listing that had social proof in it, then you could easily find all the results there. Um, so find the preview, I think was a little bit challenging because that we just kind of, um, you know, we had the panel template to work off of, but again, I wanted it to not be like other sites. And then I think really, I mean, the core experience of each teardown of each file, right? So like the basically the CMS collection page of um, 
when you click on the Basecamp uh, reposition landing page, like what would that look like? What would it feel like? Um, what's the best way to position the content? There was even, I mean, I remember one of the things I was really sweating about was like, what like dimensions do I make the images? Do I make them square? Do I make them rectangular? Do I make them vertical or, you know, landscape or portrait? Um, because that stuff matters, right? And like how you're actually going to do it. And then again, it kind of went back to myself of like, well, if I wanted to really understand and kind of pick apart a landing page or an ad or an email, I'd probably want to see the text next to the image. That way I could kind of like scan between each one and I don't have to go up and down when it gets a little bit more confusing, right? Between each, uh, between each, sec each section. So really it's just drawing from my own experience of like, what do I want this to be like? What makes the most sense to consume this content? Um, so yeah. Fantastic. Um, I, and I, I noticed how um, when I finished my sessions with you, I saw just how over the couple of weeks after that, just how many interesting iterations you did, how many new ideas you had over that time, right? So I think like spending four weeks together building and then just launching and saying we're done is kind of like a little premature. So the way we structured the Rumble guys is the first month now is the building month. The second month is testing, iterations, getting your feedback. And then the third month, in this case, May, is gonna be when we actually start voting for the products, opening these features live to all of you. So starting May 1st, uh, and then by the end of May, uh, we're gonna be uh, voting on the best product with the community. And the best product is gonna be receiving $8,000 from Codeless Ventures, courtesy of Michael Gill. And also a lot of amazing uh, uh, awards and uh, rewards from our amazing sponsors. Uh, Corey, it was a real pleasure building this with you. Uh, thank you so much for your time and just jumping on this with us. Uh, and I also think, like again, you and I have had sessions. You and I, you, me, and Chris had sessions. We've had sessions with Natick, but all of us together, you haven't had a chance to actually get the feedback from your fellow Rumblers. So before we move on, can we just, if anyone has any questions or any feedback for Corey, please jump in now. This is the time. I just want to say, like, Corey, like, seriously, your platform, as we'll see when we dive into Lean Musician, was super inspiring to me. There are just a number of principles, and you gave me a good call, like, I don't know what that was, like, 45 minutes the other night where we went through all the copy and the thinking behind Lean Musician and stuff. And I haven't actually fully implemented that because I've been super busy, but that's what I'm going to be doing, you know, this month. So really appreciate it. It's great. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you, Sako, for everything. I mean, I wouldn't be able to build it. So uh, the reason, you know, we're all here is because of you. And I'm here because of all of you. So <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> I told you, Corey, that our, our team at Catchpoint is going to, definitely going to be using swipe files for sure. And, you know, the other day I was looking for inspiration for a landing page and I'm kind of just thumbing through different pages. But, you know, the fact that you're you know, describing exactly how these companies did what they did contextualizes this information and helps us understand, you know, how do we translate our information to this page? And so it's going to be super helpful. It's a, it's a fantastic product. Kudos to you. Awesome, man. Thanks so much. To our fellow sponsors, Michael Gill, Chris Spaggs, and Niraj Shah from PandaFlow. Guys, what do you guys think of the product? I think it's excellent. Uh, I, I got the opportunity to watch some of the videos early on um, with you and Corey, and I thought I was like intrigued from the beginning um, because I think that's just the type of product that is solving a need it's solving a, a problem that a lot of people have and it's i think it's going to resonate really well um i did have a question for you corey i was curious um how much uh, overlap do you see in or how much learning let me ask a different question how much learnings do you think you took from hey marketers and refactoring growth and some of your other projects into this like was this a building block on top of those yeah absolutely uh so Hey Marketers was kind of my, my first foray into like building a product as a job board just for marketers. Um, and one that, I mean, that gave me a lot of experience just with Webflow and kind of like technical ability. Um, so now I can come in and, you know, what Sako is built, I can make these small changes, right? I'm not like rewriting or anything. I'm not a designer, but even just like experience with Webflow and, and building something from scratch, I think really allowed me to, uh, you know, take it from Sako and then make it my own, right? And, and keep building on top of that. Um, with mental models for marketing, refactoring growth, that was kind of my, my crash course into like producing content. I created both in like 30 days and kind of just like slaved away night after night. Um, and really had to create like a formal process for how do I create content? 
And then now when I'm sitting down to create these files and these teardowns, it's a breeze, right? Because I've done it before. I've created a lot of different, um, you know, uh, we've created two video courses, but each one you know, has hours of content and uh, multiple lectures, right? And so um, I think both of them had really valuable lessons for me and just being able to be able to do this in such a short amount of time, right? That I, I don't have to start from scratch uh, with the kind of creative process of this whole thing. Can we all agree that uh, building these products under pressure is why they turned out so well? Can we agree on that? If you had six months or a year or whatever to work on, ah, you know what? I'm busy. I got, I got a meeting to get to look after the kids but here. It's like, Oh shit. Like I have to step up my game, uh, you know, for within these weeks and just, I can't like screw around with, you know, buttons and icons and layers and whatever. I have to like, just build a product people can use at the end of this. So I think swipe files, honestly, I'm not just saying this because we built this together, Corey. Um, I compared what we built to many other marketing teardown websites that were out there that were kind of similar, any kind of, and they just do not even come close, sir. So <laughs> my, my hat's off to you, man. Um, so guys, uh, one point before we move on to the next Rumbler, uh, these products during demo day are still in their alpha stage. So we want to make sure that everyone has time to add their content, make some tweaks, whatever they need to do before they open it up to the public, before they release the Kraken. So May 1st is gonna be when you can actually use it. Um, right now, some of the products, uh, in Corey's case, Corey, if you wanna already open it up to the public, uh, you can do that. Uh, just hook it it's up ready, to the- ready, baby. Awesome. Swapfiles.co. Swapfiles.co, guys, uh, you can go visit it there. Uh, have you already hooked it up to the domain? Yep, all oh, set. Yeah. Awesome. And there are a couple of other Rumblers, guys, that are also opening up to the, to the public. And something to keep in mind as well, guys, since we have this opportunity, we're all live here, you guys can offer something special to our viewers as well um for for joining us so Corey, if you want to offer maybe like a special deal or something like that no pressure uh, we're just we're all just going to be staring at you like this until you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll have to come up with something come come back to me all good all good guys next we're traveling to rio de janeiro brazil we are traveling from marketing to insurance <laughs> now you're going to see what makes this rumble so interesting is just how we've had to adapt through so many time zones, so many products, so many, just the fact that all of us can be here together like this for this session is insane to me. So we have like 10 time zones here right now. This is nuts. So thanks again, everyone. So Andrew, how's it going, sir? It is going very well. It's an exciting day. Very exciting. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit the challenge that I had with this product uh, during this session. So check this out. We started off with insurednomads.com, which is still live. You can see the older version, guys. And now we're going to show you this version that, we're, that we've worked together on. This is the most content-heavy website during the Rumble. So we couldn't just take a typical approach of just like, let's go, um, you know, just put together kind of a CMS. Uh, you know, in Corey's case, it was, uh, it was more focused on the u uh, user experience. Uh, how are they going to tear it down? How are we going to build it? So on and so forth. In the case of insured nomads, we had to figure out, go through an insane process of elimination to like really narrow down to the essence of what makes this, uh, what makes this product great. Uh, so insured nomads, before I continue, please give us a little pitch and then we can go show them how it is. Yes, we are an international insurance company that we're in the startup, early startup phase where it's, our focus has been on product development. We had a placeholder website that, that has been horrible because our focus has not been on marketing yet. It's been in actually let's lay great foundation stones for uh, to be able to shift our industry to innovate and we're doing it from a social impact as a social impact venture. So everything is upside down in the way we're doing it. We wanna communicate differently, we want to provide service differently. We want to provide a higher level of product that is designed uniquely different. You know, yeah. so it's one of our challenges in coming into the no-code rumble was, okay, yes, we, know, we haven't broached how we want to present ourselves yet because we're still creating these, the behind the scenes product. And so your genius of having a totally different perspective because we're all from the travel assistance, insurance. You know, we have a couple of other C-level executives joining our team within the next week or so. And we're participating in a, 
a remote accelerator, startup accelerator that's been phenomenal. But on the marketing side, this online presence shift has been just really eye-opening and exciting. And I, I think as you reveal some of the fruits of it, I think everyone else is going to enjoy seeing it because it's as we come against the five, uh, the five, the big five in the industry: Aetna, Cigna, UHG, GeoBlue, and MetLife. Yeah. With these products, if you went to any of their websites, it would look anything like this. Even though we're sold through the same sales channels as them. I would so, say we created an experience, Andrew. That's why. That's the difference. There's their websites are just informational. You're at, you're just they're just dropping a bomb on you the moment you open their domain. And it's have you noticed that all the domains we checked out together? And shout out to Crystal who's here with us as well, uh, who's working on the tax side of things. Uh, both tax and insurance have the same problem. <laughs> it's just information after information that you just cannot understand. So they kind of use this kind of pressure point where they're like, okay, we're smarter than you. We're smart, you're dumb. You know, we're tall, you're short. You know, like, and they just kind of pressure you into just clicking that button saying, listen, we'll just take care of this for you. You know, don't even worry about it, right? But it's, it's very top down, you know? So what I talk to, uh, when I talk to Andrew and Crystal about this, uh, in our first session together, I specifically brought you both into that one session because I wanted to show everyone just how these industries, these informational, you know, service industries, they all kind of have the same problem. So I wanted to gauge kind of your approach and see if we can maybe go into more of a, like take our product design kind of approach and apply it to an industry that normally does not care about product design. <laughs> and that was really interesting. And I'm really excited to show what we came up with, Andrew. And Honestly, guys, full disclosure, I've never built a tax platform or an insurance website in my life. So like being able to adapt mentally for as a designer, as a product designer, as an entrepreneur myself was actually very high opening for me. Um, and we spent hours on this and I can't wait to show it to you. So let's go share my screen now, Andrew. And here we are. So when we load the page, we're just welcome with the logo, Insured Nomads. And look at how playful it is, right? Let's talk about branding for a second, just how you know, it just kind of opens up to you when you first visit the page. Um, what we have is the logo here at the top. We have the menu and we have a very clear CTA here. You can be guided or you can get insured instantly. So we kind of want to, we, we talked about like how insurance can be super intimidating, uh, using a lot of words, terms that you just don't understand, right? So we click on the menu here. We get the main items, which went from, I think, 277 bullets to, <laughs> I think like seven, six to seven, eight pages now. So <laughs> I know that wasn't easy for you, Andrew. Uh, and and uh, over here on the left, we set up this kind of system where like when you, when Andrew has something new he wants to share with the community, he can put it, he can actually use the menu as a way to share that. So right here at the bottom, you have that CTA, that call to action. You can go, for example, download the Global Nomad Guide and shout out to Jack Vaughn, our fellow Rumbler, for setting that up with Glide. Uh, so you can actually see the app that they built together. Andrew built a whole Nomad app along with his website <laughs> within weeks. This is nuts. So here, uh, we're not gonna go through the whole experience here, but guys, but definitely check it out, globalnomadguide.app. And so that's our menu. And when we scroll through, we have these two options. Let's talk about that experience for a little bit, Andrew. Um, I love how you just want to make everything easier for, for people. You know, you're called insured nomads. So we're assuming here that most people who come here probably don't even care about insurance. <laughs> it's the last thing that crosses their mind. So I, I know early on we had this idea of like combining kind of two experiences. One is for people who understand what it is and they can just go straight in. And then the second one is the guide me experience. So you can kind of like talk to them a little bit, right? Um, so when you click on guide me, you're scrolling here and you have these four options. So talk us through this real quick, Andrew. We spent so much time focusing on this. Yes, you know, many times it's that thing where people are not sure what they, what they're wanting. Yeah. So, and they don't know what they need. Yeah. So with this, it's a, it's a way to kind of guide more than, okay, they, they probably Googled it or they may have purchased something in the past, yeah. but some of these will save them a fortune. Yes. Yeah. Just with the simple guidance. Others will make them realize that, Hey, travel insurance is for a trip. 
I'm not tripping. I'm, mm. I'm in a lifestyle. So that means international health insurance is needed. So yeah. most people don't even realize that they don't need travel insurance for the lifestyle. They need international health insurance. So some of these simple prompts will guide them through that. Awesome. And it definitely helped me. So I like how it, like a five-year-old can come to this website and understand what it is. As we scroll through, you'll see what I'm saying. Like first it's like, okay, I go on multiple trips per year, but no longer than 45 days. It's like, okay, great. Question. Do you travel more than six? Do you total more than six months out of your passport country? The country you received your passport from? Yes. Great. Okay. Living this kind of lifestyle, you need a global health insurance plan that covers you. Great. So I can get insured. Or maybe I'm a student, right? So if you just ask me in a human language what I'm trying to do, wouldn't it be better to customize the offerings based on my decisions as opposed to just dropping 15 packages on my head and saying, like, pick one? It's like, well, how do, you, how do I know which one's the right one for me, right? So, and I think the reason they do that, Andrew, I know we were talking a little bit about the insurance industry. You really opened up my eyes to all the tips and tricks and you know, all the pitfalls out there. Like, they want you to get suckered into like a package you might not even understand, right? Let's just like, uh, let's try to squeeze as much cash as possible out of these people, right? I mean, I know people who like end up with insurance packages that are so expensive and they don't even realize like, maybe I just didn't need that. I just need something more simple. So I like how you're just very transparent here with the product. So if I click here, it says, okay, our flexible insurance options for students around the world, let you focus on studying with protection, peace of mind, get insured, great. So in the end guys, even if you click on whether you click on insure me or guide me, it's still going to take you straight to the same page. But that initial little nudge definitely helps you go through. And when you go down, we have the four main types of insurance you can get. So that takes you to the dedicated page. We have the team right over here. We have the global nomad guide. And again, a lot of this is subject to change by May 1st, guys. A lot of the content, the images, the flow. So we just wanted to really get your feedback early on before we just finalize and say we're launched. Uh, so that's why we kind of did this demo day. You have the feedback, you have like a, the testimonials, and then you have two articles. Typical, right? Now let's hop into the main page. So let's go to the insure me. And maybe you can walk us through just a little bit, Andrew, about what these packages, like the difference between these packages and like what sets you apart from Cigna or any of, the, of these other companies, like your approach to offering these packages. Okay, and the, here it's the basic thing of, okay, wow, you do more than just a travel insurance product. Yeah. Yeah, global health insurance, that's the annual plan. You know, we're getting contacted every day by so many people now, and we really weren't even planning on taking that first line live until June. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of uh, pushed everything up with that. That gotcha. product we design with no annual deductible, which is scary for a lot of people because they're going to end up paying $3,000 a year or, or a lot more even for an annual plan. And then they have a thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollar annual deductible on top of it. So eliminating that without having to raise the annual price, the premium, mm -hmm. has been a real fun thing. Uh, travel insurance, that's, that's the easy one. You know, you're going on a trip, you get covered. Gotcha. But for those who are going to be traveling more than two weeks out of the year, it's hard to get life insurance. So we have a term life insurance product for those who are living outside their home country. They could be German living in South Africa. They could be drilling wells in Chad and get that or a group product. Mm -hmm. So uh, disability insurance, that's income protection. Say I acid burns my hands. I can't type on the computer. All of a sudden I've got monthly income coming in. Tiny investment, but most people can't get it when they are spending their life around the world. They're, gotcha. they're not an additional type of client. So, you know, the group, I touched on that earlier. That's those, we just fielded one that's 17 people with an organization yeah. uh, spread around the world. Our mm -hmm. main competitors, I mentioned earlier, they won't touch them unless it's their 50 in the group. Wow. We're at the two with, uh, with as few as two. Mm. Uh, that's, that's very different. Of course, the more in the group, the better it, pricing and underwriting gets but you know with tailored solutions that could be kidnap and ransom you name it they're all kind of unique solutions that we can come up with and 
even to take it to underwriters and say, okay, there's nothing on the books called this. Can we insure it? Yes. And I know well, we also yes, we can. <laughs> we also do the tailored insurance, which is nice, uh, being able to really customize this and you know have a consultation with you and get to understand what this is. I think that's really important. I like how approachable everything is. Um, I like how I understood so far every word on this page. You know, like there was nothing where it's you know it's using these weird kind of insurance terminologies um, to kind of confuse me. Um, so I, I, you really went the extra mile, I think, on that. Um, then when you go down, guys, uh, you basically have each of these packages. So if you click on one of them, it just kind of scrolls down to that section. You get a nice you know, CTA, you get insured, you get a little description of what you can do with it, maybe some bullet points down the line of like, here's what's available to you. Uh, and that's, that's basically it for that page. Um, and now let's jump into the page itself. So we jump in. And each page has this nice cover of like a very clear, like this is what we do. So again, don't focus on the images guys, don't focus on, you know, whatever, like the main experience here is what we're trying to share with you and get your feedback on. So on the left, we have the kind of the main selling points. Uh, Andrew just kind of laid out like the main bullet points he wants to convey. And on the right, we have like three images uh, that are supposed to kind of represent what this page is about. Um, underneath it, we have just the plans that we're still filling out here, making sure we have this nice comparison of what's happening here scroll down and then you have four options you can have the policy wording which is great for the insurance experts really out there that really want to know you know more about this but not necessarily a nomad to a backpacker he doesn't need to go through the entire policy wording um, you can get a quote uh, very quickly go, go straight to the you know get a quote website that's already set up with expatriatehealthcare.com um, you guys through that experience you get a brochure so you can just view the pdf if you want to download this for later maybe Go over it with your family, it's all available. And then you have claims. Uh, it takes you straight to the page uh, where if you wanna make an insurance claim, you can get it. So each page, guys, is has this similar structure. Um, I wanna touch upon a special page, Andrew. The about page and the, and the rest, we're not gonna you know, go, uh, go into those uh, right now, it's not really important, but there was a couple of pages here that really caught my attention that I wanna highlight. Um, one was the emergency page, one was the dictionary page. So. You created a whole CMS with me with over a hundred something terms of the insurance that you manually wrote out explaining what these things actually mean. Like you really went the extra mile here. So like, you know, AIDS, ARC, you know, accident. What does accident mean, you know, in terms of insurance from an insurance perspective? Like this is what I would expect a good insurance company to do. So could you please tell me how many insurance companies have done it? I've actually never seen this. <laughs> That's the problem right there. <laughs> but I, you know, it, it comes from representing over 30 of the international uh, carriers and the experience of dealing with, oh, no, I didn't know my policy had that in it. Yeah. Or I didn't understand what that meant. Or, you know, they didn't say anywhere in there that pandemic wasn't covered. Well, it's, it's not in there, you know, or what does it mean when it's this or that? So even our policy wording, when you look at it, there's no fine print. Let's make it easy enough to read. Sure, That's the PDF true. may be quite large, but Friends. same with this. Let's just make it where everything is as easy as possible. Sadly, the dictionary, the, dictionary, um, um, the definitions. Yeah, it's, and I really like how, you know, for the contact page. page. Yeah, I really, uh, like for, I really like how for the contact page, you just made it emergency, you're like, immediately you need something right here instead of just making them go through an entire freaking site map to try to figure out what's happening in the website so there's just a lot of rich content guys um and i know you're also you've been covering during the pandemic you've actually been offering special deals to everybody for to be able to get through the covid situation can you talk about that a little bit yeah one of the things that has really hurt people around the world is that their travel insurance didn't cover um uh, pretty much went void uh, due to COVID, which is, which is sad. And yeah. we do have an option for short-term health insurance that yeah. does not have any uh, government warning, travel warning, pandemic exclusions. Yeah. And that's been in high demand, even though we weren't really ready for it. We weren't expecting a pandemic. And mm -hmm. obviously our website wasn't even ready for any of this, but 
it's been fun really helping people out in the meantime. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I saw so many other companies, uh, you know, I, I follow companies just in general, just to see like where they're heading, what they're doing. And like, they were just backing away immediately. Like they weren't even that interested. Like, I, I love how you just, you know, immediately took, uh, took the next step and said, look, we got to step up our game. Um, so for the website guys, uh, there's obviously all these sections. Um, you're gonna be able to see the full experience on May 1st with the final videos, with the content, with the guide me, with the, you know, all the stylings and everything in place. Um, and to compare, just real quick, let's go to Cigna, <laughs> since you mentioned Cigna, and compare this simple website that you just saw to what the largest insurance company in the world is doing. Yeah, click on international up top, just there for the go. appropriate comparison segment yeah. there you go oh they upload updated their design a little bit so now it's just kind of hidden behind all these pages guys but when we first were building these uh, you can go to our past sessions like it was just a wall of just text literally like top to bottom like five scrolls of just text and you're supposed to, as a nomad or as just a normal human being, you're supposed to apparently read through all of that to try to figure out how to save your life. When in reality, it could just go and become as simple as this, as simple as click. Um, so I think Andrew, my, my hat's off to you, sir. Um, I, I think I really, really went the extra mile. And I wanna talk a little bit about the challenge that I had building this product because at the end of the day, uh, it's called a no-code rumble. So what was it like for a no coder to go and build an insurance product? Uh, for me, the, the main challenge was really like I came in from the beginning from a design standpoint, Andrew, you remember that? But mm -hmm. then I realized that that design is going to change every five minutes because your content just keeps shifting as we're going through. So I realized that what I have to do is I have to give you a bare bones structure with some of the core ideas we discussed and let you kind of use that as a framework to kind of get your ideas together. And I think that worked exceptionally well. What, you, what we did was we kind of managed to take all this content and just reduce it to 10% of that and say like, this is what I want everyone to see. And I know for you, because the previous website, we talked about this from even before the rumble, when you first reached out to me, you talked about how you just felt overwhelmed, even as the creator of the product. You're like, how can I like figure out how to put all these ideas together in a, in a certain way, right? So having kind of me and I know the other rumblers have been very helpful as well, like talking to you and exchanging ideas of like helping you kind of like digest that and say like, okay, like here's where we need to go. Um, and I know we have a lot of ideas that some of them people are going to see on May 1st of where this platform is going to go in the coming months in terms of like making more of a guided structure, more of a story of like being able to choose more options, uh, being able to like kind of go from, I don't know what insurance is to, I know, I know everything I need to know. Uh, for this in like a few minutes. So uh, could you tell me by the end of the year where you want to be? Whoa, by the end of the year, this is, it's a, it's a good time to enter this industry really. And it's, it's um, I see us having a strong team yep. and our products fully, fully accepted in the, in the niche. Mm -hmm. writing a lot of group plans for, for both charitable organizations and businesses that have teams around the world. And our affiliate, our brand ambassador network is really kicking off well. We're adding a lot of people every day. And so now as of hopefully Monday, we'll have that integrated for our Nomad Health Insurance line as well as already in the travel insurance line. So yeah, it's going to be a great year. Fantastic. And uh, we're going to be launching this Monday, correct? The website's uh, going. Yes, Sunday or Monday. Yes, it's going live. Awesome. Fantastic, guys. So, insurednomads.com. You can enjoy the current website for just one more day <laughs> until we go live with the new website. Uh, Rumblers, sponsors, looking for your feedback. This was definitely the project I was most excited about in the beginning because like I had no idea what was going to happen and you guys just knocked it out of the park. So great. And uh, someone on uh, YouTube is saying thanks for humanizing insurance. It's great. <laughs> that was definitely the goal. So yeah. I'm glad you share, shares our passion for this. 
Yeah. Michael, and I would just like to say as well that I helped a little bit with the app in the beginning. I helped Andrew get into Glide a little bit, but Robert Petito, one of the Glide experts, actually, I believe, got in touch. Is that right, Andrew? Um, and I'm sure you guys have smashed it. So, yeah. I just have Hi. A... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Raj. Sorry. Um, so anybody uh, can buy this insurance, Andrew, like from anywhere in the world? Or you have to be a citizen of uh, certain countries? No, it's, it's available. We insure folks from all around the world. The products is actually, both products are under, underwritten out of London. And uh, so the majority of our clients up to date have actually been non-Americans, even though we're an American-based insurance company. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, I absolutely love this product. And um, I have to a special shout out to Andrew because I wouldn't even be a part of this rumble if it wasn't for him. So, um, you know, we kind of have the, the parallel industries, you know, where we're kind of we're going, we're going after the same clientele. Um, you know, so seeing how Insured Nomads got built out, um, you know, kind of gave us an idea of the things that we could do with our product as well. Um, and then just, I mean, the ease of use and as a digital nomad myself, who purchases, you know, these type of products, I mean, like, I am not only excited to use this product for myself, I have pushed it out to my network, I have pushed it out to my clients, I have pushed it out to people I don't even know, just because I believe in it so much. And I think it's such a great product. So I'm super excited to see where it goes. Awesome. Michael, what do you think? I mean, you guys found a way to make uh, insurance interesting. <laughs> so I think that that's a feat in and of itself. Nicely done. Appreciate it. Andrew, much success. Sorry, to you. Sorry, the, the one thing yeah. that I, I noticed there, and, and first of all, that product looked absolutely beautiful, Andrew. I mean, kudos. All that content in a month, it's just mind blowing. Um, but the one, the one thing it seemed like there was a big problem that you're solving is there's some sort of disconnect with, you know, what insurance plan these nomads should have based on on their lifestyle potentially and you know maybe Corey can help with this we can you know create some value statements you know you're saving x amount of dollars you know by selecting a plan that actually fits and you know it seems like a lot of nomads are leaving money on the table which you know nobody wants to do so you know maybe we can integrate that into some of the uh, the material that you have so that, that would be my only feedback i would love that i've gotten that feedback it's just one of those things i don't have the solution for it because I'm not the marketer and I'm the, the risk management you know, product developer. So thank you, yes. And uh, Andrew, uh, I wanna close on this point. I am kind of getting sick of seeing this constant obsession with products that are actually not related to the services industry of just like visual development or just code or just like, hey, you know, we have a better marketing tool or something. Like, we need to also spend as much, put as much passion into products that literally save people's lives. <laughs> like, it's funny to me how, you know, these websites that are this important look like they're from 1995, you know, and, and we, we need to finally, like, sh as a community, especially as no coders, right? You know, Andrew is not a no coder, you know, he's studying Webflow, but <laughs> he's not a no coder. So, like, yeah, as a community, WordPress sites. Yes. So, but I mean, it, we as a community need to go hand in hand and, and help uh, the, the community that's not in our kind of like bubble, if you will, and bring them in and say like, guys, you, we can help you do a much better job of telling your story. Because I think a great product is a great story. Um, a bad product is just a dead end with information on it. So, and I think that every product that we've seen, uh, you know, and we're going to continue seeing today are just unique stories, like their own little planets, if you will, a, little, a world within a world, if you will. Uh, so, Andrew, continue your success. Thank you so much. Good luck in Brazil. And I'm always here to continue helping you and sort of the rest of the Rumblers. And we're going to continue following up with your products over the coming months um, and hopefully the coming years uh, to continue supporting you, uh, sharing your progress with the community and getting that feedback in. Now we are traveling to Bristol. Am I getting that right, Jack? I finally remembered. <laughs> <laughs> The part of yeah, I was, apparently I was living in London for a while. Yeah, you were in London throughout all the sessions. So Lean Musician, sir, I cannot wait for you to tell us about this. This is the product I actually shared very early on, even before the Rumble. And I was like, as a musician myself, coming from an artistic family, um, shout out to my family, they're watching. Um, they, uh, you know, like mus music websites are not that exciting either. You know, they're, they're kind of like very, again, like you made a really good point. You said, if I just replace... 
all of the <laughs> all of the uh, like musical related texts on this page and just put in something else, it it still works. <laughs> like yeah, it would be, just... be like an insurance website, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think with music, what we were able to do, Jack, uh, which it's, it's one of the most colorful websites that I worked on uh, in the Rumble, and I'm so excited to share it. So please give us a little uh, uh, explainer of what it is, uh, a lead musician is, and then I can uh, jump in and share my screen. Great. Cool. Thank you. Well, bless you, Zarko. It's just been great working with you. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't have gotten to this place without you. So thanks. Um, so I've been doing, I work at Glide doing the education, uh, Glide apps and uh, on, as a side hustle for about two years now, I've been, or yeah, two and a half years, I've been doing online courses. So I've been a music teacher, I've done music, conducting, arranging my whole life. Um, and I just absolutely adore teaching. Um, I don't teach privately anymore because my courses online are kind of successful now and I work for Glide. But yeah, I about two or three years ago started getting on camera and doing courses and just absolutely love it um always always been interested in doing like anyone is doing things more effectively but because my passion is music it's about how to learn music and create music more effectively because it's a place where there's a ton of waste particularly in education there's so much rubbish and I went through like a whole lifetime of musical education there was so much waste in there so about four years ago I start I think I read the lean startup um most of you read I'm sure and it just it just made me kind of go, hmm, there's some parallels here, or at least this is a great lens for me to start analyzing and refining the way I teach music and started blogging about that. And, uh, and it's still in development. Like I would really love to write a book on it one day. Um, but yeah, so anyway, my brand is Lean Musician and it's all about how to create and practice music more effectively. And when we say Lean Musician, guys, it is lean. Like it's really straightforward. You, will ne you could never get lost in this website. Yeah, that would be pretty uh, hypocritical. If yeah. You had a <laughs> so this amazing segue, guys, we're going to go from insurance now to music. <laughs> so lean musician, let's go to our lean temp. music. Yeah, yep. got it. There we go. Here we are. So let's talk about branding a little bit, Jack, um, because like a lot of the products, guys, when we were setting up the logos and design, some of them are custom. Some of them we've kind of modified um, logo, uh, other uh, logos and templates that were available to us to kind of put together a good representation of that product um, that could, we could use early on. And what we thought we might be using temporarily turned out to be actually really nice visual, uh, you know, um, representations of these products. So in Lean Music's case, let's start with the logo, Jack. In your case, this is one of my favorite logos, right? Uh, can you break down the kind of philosophy here? What are we looking at? Um... I think the main thing was just giving people access or giving someone a sense that they can reach out and connect with music viscerally. Or I can't think of the right words really to explain it. That's one theme in there. Obviously the piano is in there. Um, but then the, my most favorite one is the kind of levels, your progress, bronze, silver, gold, really. And just, it's all progressing to the, it's this moment where you reach out and touch the piano. That's, those are the kind of themes that are going on there. Um, yeah, really love it. And I love the Fabicon as well. It's really nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so also uh going back to ensure nomads just for one second andrew your logo just perfectly captures what your product is like look at this you have the we call them the winged nomad guys it's such a beautiful mascot look at this the colors also represent so well right you kind of i know earlier on you mentioned that you have three primary uh, packages that you're offering insurance wise right so we thought like the red represents the the nomad, you know, uh, fiery, traveling around the world, uh, not a care in the world. And then you have kind of the blue, kind of like water, like they constantly adapt. They're always on the move. And then you have these three wings right underneath saying like, listen, we'll be, we'll be your wings. Don't worry. You travel, we'll protect you. So I love how, you know, when I started having these discussions with all the Rumblers guys, they shared my passion for like telling those stories. They didn't say, yeah, you know, what? let's just tack something on. And going back to Corey real quick, right? Another great example. Like, look at Swipe Files logo. I just love how smart it is. Like, you have this empty space, this negative space uh, that just works beautifully here. Uh, we have the S, we have the F. Like, again, simple, very memorable compared to any of these other uh, teardown websites. Like, there's just a personality and identity to this. So, thank you guys for uh, putting up with me <laughs> on the design side uh, and trying to get this to that level. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the name real quick. 
So lean musician, right? When you say lean, I, I did watch some of your courses, Jack, and I noticed like when you when I compare it to you know some of these other piano courses and comp composition courses that I've seen, you really have a different approach. Like you you just you don't you kind of cut out a lot of the noise again, like just the way that Corey and Andrew did, and just kind of got to the meat of it, the meat and potatoes of saying like this is what you should remember here, you know. And I know you mentioned early on you don't want your courses to be like eight, nine, ten hours long. <laughs> you just want it to be almost like two minutes, five minute segments, right? Could you talk to a little bit about the structure of these courses that you're doing? Well, actually, some of them are eight, nine, ten hours long, but I would say that they cover an insane amount of material. And well, in my opinion, but in and, segments, right? I mean, you're, you're yeah, yeah, exactly. They're like three, four minutes videos each, you know, so because um, I just I want to over deliver in the courses. So they take me like four or five months to kind of put together. Um, and uh, but yeah, the, the ethos, like I said, the, the idea of lean musicianship or whatever is so young still in my mind. So like, in a sense, like I'm not delivering the product that I want to deliver like my vision for lean musician is so much bigger than what I'm doing right now in essence like I'm, I'm proud of what we've done and what I've been doing but it's so young still like Absolutely. we can talk a bit about the vision for lean musician but yeah there's, there's a lot more to it so let's scroll down guys so the sec the idea that I had um with Jack was that in one page similar to how we work with a Corey on swipe files the website would be, the homepage would have everything you need. There is no like expanded giant site map. It really is like, these are the four main things we're offering. And in this case, we're offering courses, we're offering teardowns. We're gonna show how Jack, uh, Jack was actually inspired by swipe files, how we yep. built that together. Uh, we're gonna have podcasts and we're gonna have notes, which is the blog, the articles essentially. So let's scribe down. Now what I did is instead of having like four, you know, five separate pages, you kind of have, a short summary of each of those sections in one. Um, and that's a really nice, simple way of kind of capturing what this product does. So let's go down here. First, you're gonna see online music courses. You're gonna have a short description, very straight to the point, and you can view all the courses straight. You get a nice little video showing what, uh, what Jack is doing. And something we were super passionate about is how the website should be black, should be really dark. Why? Because first of all, the focus should be on the on the content on the music and also we talked about how you know like if you if you really think about what music is it really comes out of nowhere like that creativity that spark right that knowledge especially when he's teaching you that knowledge is light so here out of that darkness you get all this creativity all this beauty coming out so you see how here you have the, the hands playing the piano and so we just had this idea of like kind of like the interaction would be that all the all the content is kind of like coming out of the dark and then fading back when you don't need it. So here you'll notice when we're scrolling away, it just kind of recedes into the background and you get the first two kind of CTAs here, these calls to action. You have two courses. You have music composition with the piano, the ultimate guide, you have the foundations arranging music and you can just click on that and jump in. Uh, next we have the teardowns. And this is where Jack basically deconstructs famous compositions in his own special way. We're gonna show you how, uh, how we tackle that. And you have essentially a couple of those teardowns. Now, each section is gonna have four of them. Uh, in this case, we haven't really uploaded all into CMS yet. We've really been focusing on the core experience of the products and you know, spending as much time as we need to really get that where it needs to be. Next, we have the podcast section. It's an uh, issue with the image there. Sorry, Sako, I haven't messaged you about it yet. This looks beautiful. What an amazing design. Learn something <laughs> from developers. Learn something from developers, Jack. When something doesn't work, they just call it a feature. It's a new feature for the website. So <laughs> look at this beautiful font. Just focus on that. <laughs> now we're going to scroll down here. We have the podcast. You can see uh, the latest ones with this little nice little number representing it. This is the seventh one. This is the eighth one, for example. And I love, I actually took the time to actually listen to some of these, Jack. Uh, these, these are fantastic. Like you did a fantastic job uh, interviewing them and talking to them. And uh, like I normally don't listen to a lot of long form like content like this. Um, and I just like, it's so soothing actually hearing these people's thoughts and the way you kind of structured it. So definitely guys go check it out. Um, then we go down here to the notes. This will be replaced. This is a recognizable unsplash image, which yeah. I'll, uh... <laughs> it's going to be actually, can we do a shout out to your friend, Jack. Uh, the, uh, he does amazing dark light. Uh, yeah. Well, dark... we'll show the video hopefully briefly in a minute, the first tear down and Ed Alistair's been brilliant with videography and helping me with things. So. Fantastic. So here we have, yeah, we have a couple of these, a uh, couple of the, the notes here, kind of some of the blogs, we have some reviews. 
followed by the newsletter. And I love how it just fades into this image over here. Now, how, what, what inspired you to do this? Like using these abstract images to kind of capture music instead of just a typical piano or a typical, you know, like instrument. You just went completely open and abstract. Well, maybe we could go and have a look at the teardowns thing because that visually could kind of explain it to people. The, sure I've like, since I was really young, seen music in a way when I've been listening to it. So like that kind of synesthesia or whatever it's called. Um, uh, and uh, basically we watched this video a while ago with someone who was doing these kind of effects on the piano, this piano video where these keys were falling down. Maybe yeah. you could play it and mute it, Sako, so people, because I can't articulate it very well. <laughs> um, but basically uh, this was kind of inspiring to me and is to a lot of students. Um, these aren't the greatest graphics yet. We're still working on it, um, but it kind of engages people, learners a lot more because it's kind of a, a visual way of explaining music or making it seem a little bit more magical. Yeah. So yeah, um, no. if you click on the Star Wars one, actually, Saka, you'll, you'll see yeah. the, um, this is but not, not, yeah. Before we do that, I want to say, I just want to show your version here. I like how, when we first saw the Star Wars one, which is obviously very inspiring, Patrick Fishman, I can't wait to show that to everyone. But I love how you just, every time we talked about the music, you just said like, okay, this isn't simple enough. Like, let's make it even simpler and simpler and simpler until we landed on the right approach and said, okay, like I'm gonna go full on with that approach now. So here, guys, you'll notice like, this kind of reminds me of Guitar Hero, right? Um, uh, and or these VR saber games or something. Why? Because again, if he just sat next to the piano like this and he just started playing and he's like, okay, like you see this key, you need to click here. Like that's just not the, you know, 21st century kind of way of teaching people, you know, but here he was able to, you know, Jack just said, you know what, I'm going to redo my courses now. Like I'm going to go full on on this visual approach. Um, and I also like how when you jump in here, like you see, like compare this guys, this visual graphic here. Let's dive in. So an analysis of a piece can almost be never ending. You can go as deep as you want. And for me, teaching YouTube tutorial, I don't necessarily know how experienced you are. So you'll have to- First of all, can we just kudos, you know, like that amazing British accent, you know, like it just lets me focus on it even more when I hear it. <laughs> Forgive me if some of the things are either too simple for you or perhaps too complex. I'll try and do a good middle even ground to get you thinking about this piece. So we're in C minor and we start with a C minor chord. Right, And one of the things you should always do when you're breaking down simple pieces like this is just reduce the chords all the time. So here. So see how he's just, he's showing you, he's explaining it. He's not using a lot of big language. I watch actually some of these pros, these professional videos that, you know, the courses are like $600, $700. I actually bought some of those courses, Jack, just during this rumble to actually like do that compare and contrast while we were doing this. And it's just, it, again, it's that top down. You know, like just making me feel like I'm so small and insignificant as a musician. <laughs> so like, you need to make me feel like I'm already on top. Like I can do this. I can definitely just pick up a piano right now. I could do this on my freaking keyboard right now if I wanted to, you know, and you definitely do that. And I love how you just focused, like in the video, you see how your hands just come out of the dark. What we like this is that what I was referring to earlier, guys, is like all that content. It just, it like, it just flows so perfectly with, with this visual style that Jack has. Now let's go to Star Wars. Patrick Peachman has really perfected this style, but in his case, he's not teaching courses to my knowledge. It's just really focusing on like that visual experience. And he deserves the hundreds of thousands of, you know, subscribers that he has. I mean, just take a look at this. This is stunning. Notice the hand guys, again, the hands coming from the dark. So we took that, we took that element, that motif and took that across the whole site. So when Jack says that you're going to see more of the product, this is very young, that's what he's referring to. There's just so much more that's coming soon, guys. So please uh, subscribe to Lean Musician and uh, you will thank me later, trust me. So over here, uh, I love how we have these icons for each of these uh, different categories. Again, four, there's always four categories, just like in uh, Swipe Files case. Again, that was a great uh, inspiration for us, Corey. Thank you again. Um, for like just saying like here, I do ads, I do marketing, I do this. I don't want to talk about anything else. So I just talked to, um, I talked to Jack about this, Corey, and I just said like, so what do you want to do? And he's like, you know what? I just want to tell the story of music in four ways. I don't want to ever like deviate and just get into like CGI on movies and everything else. Let's just focus on this, right? 
So that's fantastic. So let's jump into these, these categories now. And I love how, again, like in the background, you just kind of have this, the image just kind of fading out. That's just such a great kind of experience there. So let's go to the pages now. We have the courses, so we hop in. Here we are. So you have this little icon representing each. So we have the uh, logo-wise, design-wise, I maintain that consistency. So you have the same font being used. Uh, and you have the little icon on top. You can go to the course. Let's jump in here, Jack. So you can enroll. I guess this is going to let you uh, subscribe already, right? Take you to the page. Yep. Um, so it, it takes to music lesson, uh, dash lessons on Teachable. Yeah, hopefully one day I'll have that all integrated in Webflow. But right now it's just uh, it's a Teachable site. Yeah, so we have some uh, content here and then we have the courses. So introduction, outline, and this brings us, this is a great segue into the pricing model that we came up with, Jack. Like again, inspired by Corey. So yep. we're gonna be offering essentially the first, not just one, <laughs> offering like first 10, 15 different you know, segments because they're short, right? Out of the course, if there's like 80 videos in a course, you could certainly offer 10 or 15 for the, of them for free. Um, and when you tap on it, I see you were able to get this to work, Jack. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> I need to throw out that thumbnail. <laughs> there we go. It's like, yes, I did it. <laughs> so we have these videos here. If you're doing anything in music, you're always doing it inside a Please always... stop playing my videos. <laughs> Jump down here, and now we can go into, let's say, a podcast. And this is the structure we used here, just to give you guys kind of like uh, the different ways we're incorporating the style. So here, like you have this integration for the being able to listen to it we're using anchor in this case you can easily go listen to it on your own favorite service um on down here uh jack integrated a um full transcript as well so you can go listen to it which is really nice and i like what you did with the gray jack this actually does work well cool instead of pure white so that's beautiful uh and yeah so basically guys this is the main structure you got the menu at the top you just have the four here you have the about section i'm gonna embarrass jack a little bit Let's jump in. Okay. <laughs> so we have a little description. We have you. Uh, you can contact him easily. Um, and then you have also like the notes so you can read. I like how you say like watch, listen, read, learn. Like you have these kind of nice uh, CTAs there as well. Uh, again, very simple to understand, which is fantastic. So Jack, you mentioned future. Where are you going to be taking us by the end of the year? By the end of the year, hmm, I don't know. So I, I'm thinking six months and then like five years. <laughs> I haven't worked out a middle bit. Um, so six months, I just want to focus on creating loads of free content. Uh, so again, I don't know whether I'm going to call it Teardowns. At the moment, I'm working with that because of Corey's uh, site. Uh, that's the working title. I just yeah. kind of want to put out so many of those so that people can just start learning in 10-minute chunks. And also, so I don't get overwhelmed. It's kind of like creating a course is like, writing a book michael you probably feel the pain there um, <laughs> kind of takes a bit takes a bit of time and you spend 80 percent of it thinking why the hell have i done this i'm never going to be able to finish it and no one's going to buy it or whatever and then there's loads of great everyone receives it well so um but yeah i just want to get loads more out and get feedback and iterate and stuff like that um but like five years ten years that sort of thing like the big vision is um the masterclass.com of music basically like i, I want to be the place that's Production wise, production value wise, like absolutely exceptional and uh, also has the, it, it is, is exceptional in terms of the caliber of people that are on there. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I just I just want to be synonymous with high level music education around the world. That's the, that's the main vision. And then there's a, a smaller vision, which is just coming to light at the moment, which is working with developers on composer assisting tools basically there's not even a proper term for this but you could say ai assisted composing or there's loads of stuff out now like there has been for years and years which is great sounds you can create with computers amazing synths amazing violins blah 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 blah. but there's not loads in terms of procedural generation of music um there is but it's not well designed in terms of ui in terms of like ux and stuff so I'm working with someone at the moment and chatting with a few more other people. So that's a long-term vision as well. But it's nuts how you rebranded your entire product. You did the videos, you set up a new structure, you set up a new yeah, vision. Yeah, the videos were the harder ones to do, actually. That was, that was tricky. Yeah, we, and we've been working with a guy called Kyle Hamrick, who's an amazing motion graphics expert. Who's, yeah. we're just, that video you saw is just V1. We're experimenting with other plugins at the moment uh, with these particle effects. And... I just want to keep going with that and like maybe in 10, 20 years time, you could explain a whole orchestral score 
with just visuals and no written music because I think that's one of the biggest barriers to music education is people look at this archaic form of language and you know 50% of people go no I can't do that I'm not talented enough this is just too difficult and then they just walk away whereas mm -hmm. what I like about those videos the synthesia videos that you saw there is that people who would not necessarily think that they they could or are good at music go wow this is really accessible like you know I can do this and I'm really interested in those people rather than the people who well, I'm interested in those people as well, but you know, I want to serve those guys who aren't being served. So that's fantastic. And that's again the common theme across all these products, serving people that are underserved. Um, and seeing how uh, all of you, like I didn't know any of you. I, I honestly didn't know when Michael and I were talking about this the first time. We we're like, okay, let's see what these products are. And then it's just every one of them just became serious, super serious, super fast. And I was like, oh shit, we got to really step up our game now. <laughs> so that got really exciting. But Jack, um, I have to say, you are literally underplaying it a little bit here. You wanted to be the masterclass of music. Have you seen masterclass.com's recent website? Your website just, I'm sorry, man, not to toot our own horn here, but. Yeah, but the people, on there, the people are on there who are slightly better than me. <laughs> no, no, but I'm not, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about the content itself. I'm saying like the experience of going through the website. Yeah, it's they've really made some weird changes. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Looked way better before, but anyways. And by the way, since we talked about Michael's book, Let's do a little uh, sponsor spotlight over here. Maker Minions, guys. Uh, I mean, we don't all have Vikings <laughs> like Jens <laughs> who threaten to raid our villages if we don't buy the book. <laughs> but that might have something to do with the success of the ebook. <laughs> but I, um, I actually uh, talked to a few people, uh, Michael, that I'm, I'm close with, and they, are, they already got your book, and they're just talking amazing. Uh, they're giving amazing reviews about the automation side that you've done. Could you give uh, a little highlight about that wow that's awesome uh awesome to hear thank you yeah was, i uh what's that that was fast from launch to like everybody's talking about it um and and like they're really seeing how like people who don't even do automation much they're like wow that that made a lot of sense to me so like i feel like jack's approach of like tackling music and just saying you know what if people don't get in the first 60 seconds then what's the point like i don't even yeah. want to do this and you just so took automation and said, here's all these weird tools that no one's maybe even heard about. And I'm going to put in the book and give it to you and then give it to a Viking to distribute it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I feel like automation is one of those words that put people to sleep. It's like boring <laughs> or it sounds, you know, out of reach or just abstract or whatever. And so really my goal with it was to take the word automation out of it and just give people a uh, hundred and one ideas on how they could bring all these tools together to really uh, automate their business and, um, you know, make, do more with less. So that was the goal, but uh, thanks for the shout out. Have you seen any examples uh, so far, uh, like inspiring examples of how someone took uh, your advice and, and turned into, uh, into maybe integrate into their own products? Uh, I haven't yet. I'm looking forward to seeing some of that. Um, I know a few people have messaged me saying they're already diving into them. And uh, it's, you know, one of the pieces of feedback that I got is it's a lot. And so people are still going through <laughs> um, a lot of the examples and kind of deciding what they want to build, but I'm looking forward to it. Fantastic. Uh, but dude, congratulations. Um, and I think we can all uh, kind of take a leaf out of the, the marketing that you did. Like you just, you create value. You didn't just try to, you know, just boost it on Facebook or something or like annoy me to death on Instagram with ads <laughs> or something I don't even care about. Um, you're really targeted to the community well. Um, and I can see I can see how people are really having fun with it. And this is definitely the first book I'm picking up after No Good Rumble to be able to read. Um, nice. that's, been, that's been the one thing that I've been like right now. I'm just in sessions all day with the Rumblers. Like, so forgive me for not reading it yet. I hope Jens doesn't raid me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I Jens, if you're listening. Uh, so... Uh, guys, uh, again, and uh, Jack, thank you so much. And thank you for helping the rest of the community as well. Um, is there any feedback, guys, you want to give Jack before we move on to the next one, bro? No, I just I was going to say, super, super great. I, I, I was just blown away by that, like the graphics and things like that. Well done, Jack. Thank you, man. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel uh, like the... Uh, Sakura showed... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Corey. I was going to say the design... Uh, is impact I feel like again like the whole learning experience is really dependent on the format and especially the video production but even on the page you know having a very like customized feel I think goes a long way for the for the student 
Yeah, and Taco showed it to me yesterday during our design, and I was like, wow, that is just so visually appealing. Like, as soon as you hop into it, I think the word I used was it's very sexy, right? It's very sexy. It's very sleek. It just immediately grabs you as soon as you click into it. So, good job. Right. Yeah, there's this intrigue and invitation, but yet peace when you look at it. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, Chris. And I also wanted to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I just like wanted to say, I mean, this whole thing that. about like trying to make it more uh, approachable for everyone, I think that's really great because I'm someone who keeps trying to learn different things when it comes to music, but I always end up not lasting for a month long. Like it, it's probably just a month and then I'm like, ah, oh, this is too overwhelming. So it's really nice that you're kind of breaking it down for people like me. So yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Right. Um, and anyone who's on the stream as well, if you want any of the courses for free, just message me. Like, that's fine. Um, yeah, and also, Jack, I, one little thing I, I, I hope people noticed is in the product, I didn't at any point, like, it's always like the hands. I'm seeing the hand. I'm seeing the motion. I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the actual, like, product experience. Like, you're not just, there isn't just this picture of you just, like, looking at the camera. Like, it's just not like, yet. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> we're, we're heading there. <laughs> so, like, I didn't just see like a pretend, I, there was nothing pretentious about that page. It was just like, I want you to care about this. And I'm going to say it in as least, less words as possible. I want you to look at it and jump in. And I think that it was very effective from that point. And I wouldn't have been able to execute that unless you shared the passion for that. Like you, you gave me so much inspiration as a product designer to do this. And, and for me, like I've worked with companies, I've worked with like clients, I've worked with all types of people who are like, it's always a different experience, like working on a product. It's really like creating a child, like creating, like raising a child. Like you, you, you're going to have arguments, you're going to have disagreements. And I'm so proud to say that even though everyone, I, it's so diverse across the board, I did not have one like argument over a product with anybody really. It was always a debate. Like, how can we make this better? Like everyone had this so much passion for hours and hours and hours on of like, yeah, I will stay on this call until this is great. Um, so my hats to all of you guys. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, so now we are going to go, let's see, where are we going? Let's go to Paris, Mr. Villard. How's it going, Quentin? I'm good, thanks, man. How you doing? Excellent. <laughs> Exhausted, but excellent. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the thing is, like, most of the sessions, guys, because I'm in Thailand, um, I either have to have the session very early in the morning or super late at night. <laughs> so I usually start super late at night and then have no sleep and then wake up early in the morning to continue where I left off. <laughs> so so uh, thank you all for putting up with me. Uh, no code mentors, man. Holy shit, dude. How did this yeah. become what it is right now? No, very few people have seen this, just the evolution of this. I know Michael was super excited talking about automation. Like we were able to integrate a few tools and basically create a product that is rivaling now, a product that just raised $2 million and that is essentially creating the same thing um, or something similar in a way that is completely uninspiring. <laughs> and I know the team, so I, I told them straight up. I was like, guys, we need to do way better than this. Uh, and they all agree. So I would love for you to tell me the vision for No Code Mentors. Uh, and before, actually, real quick, I want to mention this as well. At the beginning, when we were first putting together Rumble Team, this it just came out as spur of the moment, right? Quentin was actually not in the team at the time. Like, because like, okay, we have all the Rumblers. And then everything just got readjusted because a couple of people had to drop out. And I was like, Quentin, it's time. Let's do this. And your product, my friend, just blew me away. So I really feel like, you know, there's what you want and then there's what the universe wants. <laughs> so we just, this is a perfect storm, my friend. So please, let's jump into No Code Mentors. And I can't wait to show everyone the product. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Well, uh, just to uh, explain a bit about what it is, uh, No Code Mentors is a, a platform that um, gets you on a call uh, with the best mentors in the No Code space. Um, basically to help uh, elevate your skills and get better at what you do as a no-code maker or entrepreneur. Um, so uh, why we did this? Well, um, we all know how strong the no-code community is and uh, we wanted to offer all the makers in this space another way to learn from, um, from the best, actually. Uh, completely different from what you can get on Twitter with threads and DMs and stuff like that. I know the community is very uh, active on Twitter, uh, but we wanted to make something special 
and that is not a basic marketplace either. Um, we wanted to have our very own identity. We wanted to create the most straightforward experience uh, to connect mentors and mentees. Uh, and we wanted to make it personal uh, with uh, live one-on-one -on -one video calls um, and not just a chat or whatever. So that's the main idea. Fantastic. And I have to say, guys, this is not just one of my favorite designs that I've worked on with Quentin. This, to me, is genuine. I'm putting this, I'm putting this on tape right now. This is one of the best designs I've ever worked on. And so I'm super proud of this. So let's jump straight in. This is too much, Taco. Oh, dude, dude, my, my hat's off, man. Like, you have no idea how excited I'm up. But check this out. Simplicity, right? Simplicity. Can you visually say what the product is without even scrolling? Like just immediately show me what it is. And here we go. Ready? That's it. That's your entire product right there. Yeah. You have the mentee on the left and you have the mentor on the right. That's it. And I'm gonna reload that real quick because the video's uh, there. It just opens up to you. It just says welcome, right? How you could use something as simple as a Webflow interaction to engage with me, to say like, it's okay, you're, this is for you. Even if you don't need a no-code mentor, you're gonna wanna scroll to this page, right? So it starts with learn from the best. And I love how learn is on the left, he's learning from the best and he's the best. So we used Ran as an example, Ran Segal, shout out to Ran. Uh, we appropriated your video, sir, <laughs> if you won't mind, um, uh, just to use as an example, now, until we have our own videos. And we have, Find your mentor, you can click here, go straight to the page, or you can become a mentor right here. And you can also watch a video, pops it up. We're gonna have a video soon, which shout out to Jack is gonna be helping us do the video for the product. Uh, so thank you so much, Jack, for that. Uh, and I know Jack, you also mentioned you wanted to essentially create your own company one day, hopefully maybe in the future to create these really professional videos to be super exciting. So um, I think, uh, uh, we could, uh, Quentin could, and Quentin and the rest of Rumblers could super, like, uh, it could be super beneficial for them to be able to tell their stories um, with you. And I mean, you're re you're such a good orator as well, like explaining it, describing it in simple terms, like what you've done with Lean Musician just translates beautifully. And I can, uh, to any, really any product, I think, uh, you could make me buy anything. <laughs> so, so I'm really excited about that. Um, so here, let us now scroll through page. We have the we have the uh, menu on the left. Again, it's not even a menu. It's, it's just letting you know that, hey, this is what we are. You know, it's not even a site map. It's just like, this is it. And then when you scroll down, you have three steps. Step one, you find. Step two, you book a session. And step three, you learn. That is it. There's nothing else you need to worry about here. It's plain English. And then you have some of the tools. You can click on here if you want to go view it. You can scroll down. And now you get our mentors. Here we are. These people, these are mentors that this is not dummy content, guys. Chris Spags, Michael Gill, Jens, or the Viking, as I call it, Mirage. We have all these amazing, talented people who have already been inspiring thousands of people uh, across the community. And they're going to be offering their time now on No Code Mentors. And there's so many more on the way. So here you can just click, meet your mentor. It jumps straight in. And I love how as we're scrolling, you know, you have that little bit of an animation of like, it's just opening up to you, right? That door, it's like that little box is just sliding down and then it just gets picked up, picked up like a curtain just goes up. Here's Michael. We're gonna shameless plug you to death. <laughs> 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 and I was even thinking guys, we could do like a play button, uh, Quentin, like right here above, we talked about that. Like once we have little videos, uh, Chris, what do you think about having like a, like a one minute video, right? Just a, like a, or 60 seconds or like two minute video about of you just talking about what you want to offer and just, you know, uh, being gracious to the community. What do you think of that? Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. You know, I, I haven't seen that done very often and that just makes it so much more approachable um, as you're looking for a mentor. Fantastic. So here what we did was we kind of like just stripped away everything you don't need, right? It's, you have the name, Chris Spags, you have the founder of Jeff Loops, you have a short description and then you have find your mentor. That's it. We don't need hundreds of tags. We don't need like, you know, I've also worked here. I've also done this other thing. It's like, this is what you need to know for me to be your mentor. If this doesn't connect with you, resonate with you, then don't, you don't need to, we don't need to go any further. So I really respect that. Um, then when we scroll down, you can meet more mentors. 
and we also have a testimonial. So this is how we're going to be, this is the kind of approach we have for testimonials. So like Quentin met Sarkis and built no-code mentors. You know, uh, Niraj met Michael and together they did this other thing. Like it's always about what happened, not just, oh, this is amazing. I love this website, whatever. Like just what actually happened though? Like, let's get to it, right? And I think that, uh, uh, Michael, are you planning to do like a website for Maker, for Maker Minions and things like that? Yes, yes, it's coming out very soon. Very cool. So like, wouldn't it be great if like you had that section of like, this person actually did this with it. Like, I don't want to hear about these five-star reviews, you know, like just did it actually help somebody? <laughs> so yeah. I think that's, that, that's really where it needs to go. And I love how when we're scrolling, Quentin, like you see how these panels are just kind of like going up together. Like they're just kind of like sliding against each other. Like, like they help, they actually collaborated. Right. So again, like using visual cues to tell that story and then you can meet the person you know, meet the mentor or whoever, right? In this case, Quentin, you and I, like we mentored each other, dude. Like I, I've learned so much during this process working with you, it's, it's been a pleasure. And then Thanks, finally, over, yeah, and finally over here, guys, we have the newsletter. So join your mentors. You can get pro tips, special offers and so on. You can know like who the upcoming mentors are gonna be uh, uh, once a month, no spam. Uh, and over here in these little circles, we were thinking of having uh, little videos of these mentors as they're talking. So it's just gonna be this really nice looking, unique little box over here. You get the frequently asked questions, very short, very straight to the point. And then you have the footer, which is just the links, no code mentors. Now, let's go into finding a mentor. When you click in, you have find your mentor, get access to the best no code experts. And in the video, we were thinking of doing a loop of Miraj, Michael, whoever, like all of our, all of our no code experts, actually like waving at the screen and like, just kind of like saying like, hey, like we're here for you. So that little header image just says so much. Uh, and when you scroll down, you can start seeing all these mentors here. We have Andrew Davison. Um, by the way, Michael, <laughs> look, at, look at JT's. <laughs> like we said, could you send us a profile picture? He's like, yeah, this is the one I want to use. I'm like, you look like a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Like, <laughs> I can barely see you. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, it looks great. <laughs> I was like, all right. But as enough. you scroll, he starts to peek out a little bit. So it's kind of cool. I get to see his eyebrows, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that section. There's going to be, there's again, there's more uh, little surprise we have uh, in store until May 1st. And then be a mentor. Now, this was my favorite section of the page, Quentin, personally. Check this out. You're going to be a mentor. And right here. Okay, my, my camera is, here we are. So you can immediately see me in the page. I'm becoming a mentor. Like, <laughs> so, so here, it it's just makes me feel like I'm already part of the platform, right? Such one little image. One little element, but it just, I'm in. Like, okay, I, 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 let's check it out, fine. You know? That's amazing. So, yeah. That's awesome. And also, there's more. I'm gonna be, this is gonna be my QVC. Flip? Mind blown, dude. <laughs> this so is wow. super clever. So <laughs> Thank you, guys. So I did this thing as well, Quentin, um, as a little surprise. I don't know if you like this, but when you click, it goes sepia. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so. And another thing is uh, we, I want to have like all the effects in Webflow. So it's like the invert effect, this other effect, sepia, black and white, everything. So it just feels like, again, it's your, we want this page to be all about you. Like personalize it, have your own personality here, you know, color it uh, any way you like. And I love how we just went with the weirdest color for the website, which is lavender. Michael, how many lavender websites have you seen? <laughs> it's just all white and really like plain, right? It's either dark, it's either light. Uh, here, we just thought, let's have this simple kind of gradient going down the page. Um, and I love how, Quentin, maybe you can talk on this a little bit. The invite-only approach, you got that from Dribbble. Yeah, um, it's, it's an inspiration. Uh, and uh, of course, we want to have uh, only the best uh, mentors um, on the platform. And uh, so you don't want to be... Um, kind of spammed with um, uh, many pretty good people that could offer uh, their services, but uh, we really want to have the best of the best. So yep. I, know, I, I know Jack is uh, having this idea of getting close to what masterclass is um, for music. Uh, we could also have this approach and think that um, No Code Mentors is kind of having this approach too. Um, 
that you know that you will only find very, very good people in there. Uh, uh, and you will have uh, value from the call. You will uh, either get for free or paid. Uh, um, but that's the idea. We want it to be very different from what you can see um, and, and find um, on both marketplace, marketplaces um, topics and, and mentorship topics as well. Uh, we want it to be very different from that. And, and again, have, have this very straightforward uh, approach where you just see the mentors and you didn't see, you didn't show it yet, but. That's what I was waiting for. I want to get your feedback yeah. first. Remember. And then you go to the mentors page. You have a little bit more information about what it is, uh, who it is, what, who, what it does, what, uh, what uh, tools uh, he, the, 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 the mentors use, uh, yeah. uses. Um, but again, uh, you, have, you have text uh, below that uh, with more information. We have to fill this uh, space with more information as well um, and a way to get in touch yep. with the mentor if you just want to reach out. It's uh, be the, in terms of Twitter, like we were integrating Twitter tweet, like your latest feed. So in this case, Chris, uh, we're, uh, we're making you blush here a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, want... you could have picked anyone else. <laughs> we could have. Like we could have picked Michael. I mean, we haven't spotlighted him at all today. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> we love you all. Uh, so check this in. Check this out. Uh, in the structure of it is we have Chris, we have founder of Jetboost. We have, is it a paid session that he's offering? Is it free? Is it paid or and free? Uh, in some cases, like in Tom Becker's case, shout out to Tom uh, uh, from Flowbase. Um, it's, he's only doing free sessions, but short ones, like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, which is really cool. And then you have short description and then the tags that represent Chris the best. So like in this case, it can be Webflow, it could be Jetboost, it could be integrations, is he a founder or CEO? And then you can book your session. So this is where uh, the automation king can give us his feedback. We have, let's see if this works, Quentin. There we are, Calendly, that's it. Pops yeah. up, you get to see your sessions here. Pick a date, pick a time, confirm, jump in. My name is Sarkis. Uh, you know, whatever, let's schedule event, right? Yeah, uh, I, this is the, the main idea behind all that is as we want, again, to, it to be the most straightforward, um, in, the, in, the, in the most straightforward way. Um, yeah. But also we have to keep in mind that we only had a few weeks to build that and we don't have a tech team to build all the um, calendar uh, integration or calendar uh, feature. So we had to find another way to provide the service using tools that already exist. Um, and the way that we did that uh, to me is the best way we could do it uh, because it's, you're not leaving the platform. You can book a session in a minute. Um, and, but we didn't have to build all, all these features for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I think again, putting that, setting that limitation there and saying like, you know, we, you don't really have the time to go over the rails. You know, you have to really focus on what it is you're trying to tell. I think is the reason why the product turned out so well. Um, and also something else, guys, uh, what you're seeing here with the visuals, this, this, these cutouts, guys, um, are going to be 3D. So what I'm doing is we're going to take this element, in this case, Andrew, uh, we're going to take him out, set him apart from the background. And when you're moving through the screen, it just flows over that box in the background. So again, it just feels like you kind of have that connection with your mentor, you know, he's, he's kind of approaching you as you scroll down. Um, so here again, like this description here can be completely customized by, uh, by the mentors. You have a little section here if they want to get in touch with you and we're going to have more in the, in the page as well. But we want to actually release this now in an alpha kind of mode just to get everyone's feedback, especially the mentors who we've been putting on the spot right now. <laughs> yeah. um, and Chris, sorry for spamming you uh, for uh, setting up the sessions with you. you can, um, although I would love to have another session with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is me like shamelessly trying to get another hour with you. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the main structure guys. Um, and what we're gonna be doing is allowing, um, uh, tying, the, tying these sessions up to kind of an overall page um, in Calendly where you can see all the, all the times that are available. Um, and at that point, people can select a, uh, select a time, everything else is automated. Um, and 
The sign-up process, which is going to be coming soon as well, as well um, through MemberStack, uh, we're also integrating JetBoost as well, Chris, um, is we're going to be able to uh, essentially let you guys just automatically fill all this in and not have to even worry about you know sending it to sending it to Quentin and just kind of like slowing down the process, you know, right? But one thing I want to highlight, guys, is when I was talking, making the website invite only, why is that a power play? Because you have to get an invite from either Michael, Niraj, Chris, Andrew, uh, Davison, like whoever on that website. And they have to shout you out on Twitter to be able to get you in. So it is really like invite only, very seriously invite only. And we did that purposely because again, this is paid sessions. This is not just me having a quick call. Even if it's like, even if you're offering a, a free call, still the value that these people need to provide has to be really on another level. I mean, what, what these uh, gentlemen here with us are providing already in their tweets alone are so valuable that you can't even imagine what one hour or like a two hour session with them is gonna be like. So we wanna make sure that the quality never goes down. Like now with Dribble, we had this conversation guys uh, to, uh, to the mentors specifically, I wanna let you know this. Uh, we did talk about like, okay, what's, how, what's wrong with Dribble now? The problem is like anyone can really get in now. Like anyone can just invite anybody. But here it is so closed and we never want this to really open up. We want this to always be like, at least maybe even the future, Michael, what do you think about this? Like having like three mentors endorsing you, like make it even harder eventually. So if yeah. they come, it's also a great way of promoting them, like shouting them out and saying, here, we have a new mentor that's coming into the platform, right? What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I like that. It's almost like you have to be, um, it's like, it's like you're getting your, you're getting credentialed by the existing mentors, right? And they're saying, yeah, we've, they, they've done enough sessions with us that we say they are now ready to be a mentor or something like that. Yeah, and Niraj, uh, I know you and I talked about this. Like, not not everyone people. There are really smart people out there, but not everyone can mentor. Not That's everyone right. can talk to you, right, and explain this to you, right? I know, like, I enjoyed really, you know, speaking of automation. Like, you're in automation too with PandaFlow, with uh, PandaFlow.io guys. Go check, definitely check that out. Again, one of our amazing sponsors. Let's go to PandaFlow real quick. Like we talked about how, you know, you wanted to like simplify automation. And I love how even the website, you're just simplifying it as much as possible. Like, and then it just reflects on our conversations that we have together about like, you know, I can, I can tell who made this website. Like, I really enjoyed that. You know, you can go watch our session guys, by the way, on, on YouTube uh, that I had with Niraj. Like it's just filled with gems. You know, Niraj talks about his journey. He talks about the, how, you know, this tool actually came together. And, uh, you know, just how he's trying to kind of take automation, which to Michael's point is really, let's say, boring or like, makes people sleep and just encourages them to kind of look at it from uh, other angles. So Niraj was, uh, Niraj is really like looking forward to like automating the website itself and just making it super interactive and getting you in, right? So I think like having multiple sponsors, uh, multiple uh, mentors in this case, uh, to actually talk to each other and kind of consult and say, you know what, I think that Andrew is gonna be a really good mentor as well. I think it also creates a camaraderie, doesn't it? Chris, what do you think about that? Uh, between the mentors themselves? Yeah, yeah, I think any uh, you know collaboration that can happen between mentors is just gonna make the experience better for everyone involved. Fantastic. Uh, and guys, from the Rumblers, any feedback for Quentin? It's simple, it's beautiful, I'm sold. That right there, that sound bite. We're gonna take that, put it on the wall. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. You've done a great job of really capturing who these men, and it does feel really personal. You know, it feels, it feels like you are speaking right to the person even before you start speaking to that person. Um, and the county, county integration is, is, is fantastic. Just kudos, what, really well done. Yeah. yeah. The, the camera but, trick was mind blown, man. You guys, <laughs> yeah, like what? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering any any privacy. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you guys yeah. did something really, really yeah. uh, tough, which is you were able to make the website feel like what the product is. Well, that's really tough to do, but you're, you know, Quentin, your whole aha moment is going to be when the person gets to be there on that call with that mentor. And you've brought that aha moment right to the front on the on the site. I mean, it's it's amazing. There's no when somebody's on that page, there's no reason not to click and sign up. 
Yeah, th thanks, uh, Michael. Um, it's uh, it's kudos to 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 Sarko for that because he he brought uh, the idea. Uh, but yeah, uh, the 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 main thing uh, was to kind of show what we are doing here and not just tell or text with you know say with text or having a a, a basic um, good though, but basic um, and usual landing page. We wanted to have this, you know, to provide this experience uh, right from the beginning. So thanks, Sako, for, for the idea. My pleasure. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Uh, lastly, what is your vision for the, until the end of the year? I don't want to say five to 10 years. I know Jack was, uh, Jack is like insane. When he said AI with music, I was like, Jesus Christ, like, this is, I'm going to love working with this person. <laughs> and I absolutely did. So <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to look out for. Anyone who mentions AI <laughs> like, at any point, <laughs> it's like insurance delivered by robots. You know, if Andrew, if you said that. <laughs> um, so, but Quentin, what do you think about like, I think this product is so in the moment, especially now with the, with the whole virus situation, like everyone wants to like kind of connect and learn with each other. They have more time to be, you know, to self-reflect and, and kind of take on these challenges. Uh, what do you think you want to do until December, until the end of 2020? Well, um, that's true. That it is a, a good timing, I would say, uh, for, for this kind of product, even though we, we decided to work on that way before all this crisis uh, appeared. Yeah. Um, but, um, well, we, we, we have a lot of, of things in, in our minds, and uh, we're going to add a lot more stuff uh, to this uh, platform. So uh, I think in the forthcoming weeks and months, uh, we're going to add more features with uh, categories, filters, search, uh, to easily find the mentors you need as a, as a maker to make the experience even though even, even more um, uh, straightforward and easy. Um, then uh, we will add maybe user profiles um, uh, for mentors and mentees um, as we want to make the experience very special on this platform as well. Uh, but also in terms of mentors, uh, mm -hmm. we want to to have a lot more uh, experts uh, on this platform. And we um, already have amazing mentors that will join very soon, but that's, that's also a big part of the project is having actual good mentors to join. Um, and in a more uh, long-term, I would say, we will expand uh, to more topics uh, and tools um, to help makers uh, and entrepreneurs uh, find the perfect person to talk to uh, in their entrepreneurial entrepreneurial journey. Um, mm -hmm. That's the first step. But uh, uh, so we might have illustrators, VCs and other entrepreneurs to join as well. Not not maybe, you know, a bit a part of the no code space, uh, but we'll see what people want because yes. uh, eventually we might expand to other topics as well. And that's <laughs> That's the, that's the part that I love about this tool is you didn't just say, you weren't greedy. You didn't say, let me just bring in all these industries. Let's just bring in as many mentors as we can. Like you said, let's start with an industry that is very personable, very friendly, very open. I mean, I can't think of another industry, guys, where people are so open to helping each other. This is crazy. Like, you know, like I could, I'm, we're sitting here with founders of companies. We're sitting here with investors, we're sitting here with all these people who are just like, I'm ready to go in. Like, what else can we do together, right? Um, and you know, just no strings attached. That's what's insane to me. And I and I, I absolutely I can't even describe it. Just how much that means to me. So um, I I talked to Quentin guys about this. Let's have all these other categories uniquely integrated as time goes by. No code mentors right now is perfect for the no code space. Let's make it as friendly as as impressionable as possible. And then down the line, let's find other ways of integrating others. So I just had this idea. Quentin, just right now as we were talking, which is similar to what most of this rumble has been like. It's been serendipitous as hell. Like <laughs> so many of our ideas just came like, oh, like we're at three in the morning. Like we're talking about, you know, we're having a five hour session with like <laughs> on, on with Peter <laughs> or I'm having like a three hour session with Quentin. And we have this idea of like, we should do this. So I just thought about this now. What if down the line mentees had to also be verified? Yep. They could, they uh... have to because I think a lot of the time you have like a teacher wants to have a good student too. It's not just, you know, I, I got this. I just thought about this because my piano teacher that I had in Armenia, brilliant teacher, 
Like she was, she just was very selective about who she taught to, you know? So I think that having this kind of um, filter, essentially, I don't know how we're going to do it. We don't want, we don't want to make people feel like uh, not included, of course, but I think that it would be really interesting to see how uh, maybe the community could be kind of part of the discussion. Like maybe if someone has had at least one session, at least one session with someone on No Good Mentors, they could be kind of like uh, a leader uh, to, to bring in more people. What do you guys think about that? Well, on, on my side, I think it's a, it's a good idea. Uh, I think the, the, the first thing that pops it in my head when you want to filter uh, the mentees is a paywall. I would say, um, yeah. but it's not the the uh, the purpose of the platform for now. We don't want to monetize it yet. Uh, but uh, if more mentors are offering free sessions, they're offering their time, so they want to be sure they will be speaking to people that want to learn. Actually, uh, maybe you know connect with them and and maybe collaborate in in the future. Uh, so having a, a paywall or a way to to say okay. Uh, I'm a mentee and I'm serious about what I'm doing. I'm serious about, you know, learning. Um, so if I have to pay, let's say 50, 100, I don't know, um, to get access to those, to those mentors in free time of, of, uh, of you know, their free time, uh, yeah. then I have to, if I have to pay to do that, as I'm serious, I will do yeah. that. I got you. Well, dude, um, I love building this with you. Um, I think the product itself is ready to go alpha. Do you want to open this up uh, uh, this coming week already for yeah, people to start? I think, I think we need uh, to do some little tweaks here and there, but uh, we're, we're going to launch this uh, yeah, in the following days. Fantastic, guys. So please uh, go check it out, guys. Uh, you can go to milkwoodmentors.webflow.io uh, to already subscribe. And uh, I think uh, Quentin and I are going to come up with something special to, to offer you guys um, as the first kind of like beta testers. Um, so, uh, but now we're going from Paris to the Big Apple. Welcome to New York City, Peter. Spokable, my friend. Jesus Christ. I think you and I literally broke the record for longest sessions. <laughs> like, what, what is wrong with us? You're talking about not arguing. I, you know, we definitely argued a little bit, man. <laughs> I love those discussions, dude. I, I love how I wake up. Like, Peter's, Peter does this thing where he's like, tell me, like, Tell me what you want to do, soccer. I'm like, this is what we'll do. He's like, great, that's wonderful. And then I was like, I'm going to go and tweak that later. <laughs> so um, we've gone through so many uh, renditions of Spokable, guys. Uh, and Spokable to me is like, it's, again, tackling such an important problem. Um, again, it's education, teaching people. But who you're being taught by is so important. So I think with, uh, and in terms of complexity, this is officially the most complex product out of the entire roster in, in the no code rumble um, because the just the design the structure the profile editing the member stack jetboost integrations everything that we had to do was so convoluted in such a simple experience but so difficult to put together that i mean i can't even believe we did that in, in such a short amount of time so please uh guide us through the process what is spokable yeah and i'm glad we piggybacked off of quentin because, you know really what the no code space has allowed you know afforded makers the opportunity to create communities and also yeah. foster collaborations and, and connections. You know, I know this, this whole coronavirus has, you know, it's, it's not, it hasn't caused a shift in how we're connecting, but it really has accelerated, you know, how we're connecting online. And so the idea for Spokable, um, Spokable was a speaker collaboration project. And so the idea was in my previous life, when I worked uh, in, in other marketing roles, so I would put, to, I would be in charge of co creating content. And so, I would run a series of ask, live Ask Me Anything. So essentially we get a panel of three or four experts in, and I worked in the, in the technology field. Um, and so I would be tasked with going out and reaching out to well-known speakers in their space who have a really niche expertise and selling them on the, the idea of coming together with these other speakers and creating this event. And so we, I ran into a lot of problems and there are serious problems in the industry that I'm, we're trying to solve with Spokable. Uh, one of one of which it was hard to find speakers in these niche industries. I mean, there's no one directory database of somebody who talks about uh, WebAssembly or some of these really niche tech tech concepts. Um, and you know, the second part is I you know it was, it's a responsibility for me and other organizers to foster diversity and create a diverse panel. And, and I think that's important to show that and create that it creates better content and, and really it, it's important, especially for the tech industry. 
Um, and so finding just those niche topics and then finding a diverse panel was almost impossible. There was no list there. And the second problem that I faced was communicating. Um, you know, it would be a DM on Twitter. It would be finding somebody on LinkedIn, sending a, a message. And I don't know exactly how that's going to go and when they're going to receive it. And so, and also the, the data is not structured and when and how that, that speaker is receiving. And so it's, it's really a disrespect to their time and, and, you know, and how they have things coming in. And these speakers get a lot of requests. And yeah. so there's some major problems. And so what that would cause for me is I'm now waiting around for speakers. We're not, some, a lot of these AMAs didn't happen because I couldn't fill the roster. Um, and so here introducing Spokable, it's a way to create a list of the most amazing storytellers, writers, speakers um, that speak on very specific topics. These are not speaker bureau folks who are professional speakers who are kind of out of touch with their industry. These are folks I mean, we have on the website from all walks of work who are currently creating the next latest and greatest designs, technologies, no code tools. You know, it is it, you know, while we have a technology focus in the beginning, we would like to, you know, broaden that focus. But that's it's a, at the, at the simplest form. It's it's fostering collaborations between sponsors, organizers who have ideas and want to create content and speakers who have those stories to tell. Amen to that. So this is a complete custom design, guys, um, as was NoCode Mentor or some of the other products. Um, we had to really figure out, like, with each product, we have a different approach. You can't just go custom on everything. Like, you have to understand what's the right tool for the right job. Um, so we're going to jump in now to Spokable. Spokable.io is going to be the main domain. Here, when you first arrive, you have just two options. Again, guide me through. I say, like, great products are dictatorships. Not the bad kind, the good kind, where it's, it doesn't let you go off the rails. It tells you like, this is where you need to go. This is what we want to offer you. So it's almost like just helping me get to where I need to be instead of having a menu which just stacked with 15 you know, different menus and uh, items and so on. So here you have speakers and opportunities. The opportunities are the sponsors, the speakers are the speakers. When you scroll through, we have this nice shout out to Pablo Stanley. I love how you use the characters, Peter. Um, this was a great, uh, great idea from the start. So the black well, character. It goes, it goes with the whole kind of idea of, of, you know, folks creating these open source materials, technologies for us makers to, you know, not have to have go through custom illustrations, but still, you know, utilize this, this amazing diverse uh, set of illustrations here. Yes. And uh, visually wise, I want to mention one thing, guys. Peter is not a professional Photoshop user. And he was able to take on a new tool, a new approach, and just turn out one of my favorite designs that I've seen. Again, talking about the power of limitations, like time limitations, tools. There's so many tools I didn't know how to use at all at the beginning of this rumble that I've become pretty proficient at. And Chris, thank you so much again for hopping on and helping us with Member Stack. I mean, with, uh, with Jetboost and seeing how it integrates with everything. Like, I just freaking love your platform at this point. This is how simple and fast it is. And I mean, you as a developer, what you were able to do is to take that and say like, okay, how do I explain this to someone who does not understand anything about like search or advanced search or filtering or anything? And you were able to simplify it. Man, hats off to you, hats off to you, sir. Um, and then we go down here. Thank you. So with um, uh, Peter, with, with the structure, we wanted to kind of have two things, right? Top storytellers, so you can go discover the speakers. And then we had the platform for your story deserves. So now you can discover opportunities. So speakers can go in and find their next gig, whether it's a podcast or it's uh, you know an article or a, sp a speaking opportunity, so on. And then when you scroll down here, you just have the newsletter, short description, and the footers. This is also one of my favorite footers that we've done. So that's really awesome. So walk us through, let's go to the speakers page first. Walk us through this real quick, please. Of course. Yeah, and, and right now we have a couple you know pieces of dummy content. Uh, you know, obviously the first focus for Spokable is going to be reaching out. I've I've been in touch with with a, a few speakers on feedback on how to structure the platform, and so you know I really want to show them exactly how they're going to be displayed um, because it is their personal brand. And before signing up for something, um, yeah. they want to make sure that it's it's portrayed that in in, in a nice light. Um, and so you you see here we have just very simple information. Um, a couple of tags in order to be discoverable. We'll also be hiding other tags just so it's, e it's even easier to discover some of these speakers, and especially in the technology industry. There's this ton of niche topics um, that I might be searching for JavaScript optimization. So having that information there in order to catch, you know, some of the, 
in order to filter through that with JetBoost is really important. And the thing that I think sets us apart on the right is, is sharing some of the, uh, the information that we really want to share. It's who, you know, who are, who are the speakers besides what's on their LinkedIn profile? What is, what is their mission? You know, the, the folks that I've worked with, they are all very intrinsically motivated. They don't just speak, they don't just speak at conferences, but they speak up for causes and they speak out for causes. And so I wanted to give them the opportunity to share that because I, you know, I find that that has been really important with every single speaker that I've worked with. Um, and so a little bit of, you get a little taste of what their mission is, what they speak up for, and then their untold story. You know, a lot of speakers have stories that they haven't, they haven't told yet. So, you know, it's an opportunity to share this and have organizers that might be like, Hey, you know what? We, we would love to do a podcast. We'd love to do a, a webinar. We'd love to do something on this untold story. We'd love to sponsor us and create that audience and platform for you. It's kind of like going to like uh, eBay or Amazon or something like it's like a wish list, right? Like I would love for someone to pick this product up for me. There's something I'd like to have. So here having an untold story, I haven't seen that before. Again, great, great concept. Like, well, let's go click on it, learn about this opportunity and then go from there, right? Um, and here on the left, uh, let's take uh, Vlad as an example. So here we have, you know, founder and CEO at Webflow. We have his name. We have three tags that best capture him, you know, uh, instead of like 10, 15 tags, like the opposite of LinkedIn, right? Um, we don't want to have just so many skills and whatever. Like you just don't know who this person is. So let's just say, here's the three things, no code culture and web design. This is what Vlad really is all about. You can go to his profile. You can collaborate with him. You have three links. We're just sticking to three. You have his website, you have Twitter, and you have Medium. That's what we want to offer you. And then on the right, my mission is to democratize creativity through the web. I want to speak up with the American Cancer Society, for example. And, uh, you know, Laura Mipson <laughs> is the untold story. <laughs> what well, is this example? You know, obviously we're using Webflow. Yeah, yeah. I'm just highlighting Vlad. You know, he is, he's not currently on the, on the platform, but, you know, just to give you a taste of uh, how things are going to look for, for an actual, you know, founder CEO. Yeah. And then when you scroll down, you can get started becoming a speaker or post an opportunity. Very simple. Uh, now let's go to opportunities real quick before we so go. Actually, do you want to, do you want to just click on Vlad's profile real quick? So we can just kind of. I wanted to actually compare and contrast because I know we had opportunities inside the page. So I just want to have both of them. So if that's okay. So here we have, again, contain, maintain that consistency, right? White is for sponsors. Dark is for speakers. So when you come to the, if go from speakers to, spo to sponsors, you just see that switch automatically. Um, so talk, talk us through the opportunities page real quick, please. Yeah, if you scroll down just a little bit to the first one. So this is, an, this is a chance for organizers to post their opportunities. So, you know, on, on the one hand, they can go search, um, you know, for actual speakers to go collaborate with them and reach out. On the other hand, you know, they can they can post their opportunities and have speakers apply. Um, and so the, the bits of information here is company that's sponsoring, a couple of tags about what the, the specific event is. And then we have these expiration dates applied by and what and how we're, how that's going to work within the tool, you can actually filter out. So we're setting a date in the future and you can filter within Webflow to filter out these CMS items. Um, when you pass that date. So it's not stale content, things are automatically dropping out from the CMS. And so these are kind of the latest and greatest opportunities that, that speakers have that they can come in and, and apply for. Fantastic. So here are a few examples. You have the type of opportunity. It's a podcast. This one is a talk. This one is also a talk. You know, this is a lecture. You have the date when it's supposed to be taking place. And you have an expiration date that you have to apply by August 14th if you want to be considered. Um, and here you have a short description. You have the three tags. Again, same way with the speakers, three tags that represent this product, uh, th this opportunity. Uh, you have the sponsor itself. So in this case, Google, you can go to their main website, google.com in this case, for example. Uh, and we, when you click on the opportunity itself, whether here or you click here, it takes you straight to the opportunity. There it is. And you can just notice how it just kind of flows in there. You can click on a video to see like an opportunity. So this was inspired by, again, uh, this was inspired by actually no code mentors to have that little video of, uh, have that little video of um, the opportunity, the person, whatever it is. Like if Chris was organizing an event, if Panda Flow was organizing a conference, like I want to see Niraj talk about it. Like here's what I'm offering the you know an amazing speaker if you can come over here instead of just saying like we'll pay you this much you know it's like it's more personable for sure and in the background we're going to have these custom kind of uh, background uh, badges and images we're going to talk about in a second um, for that particular uh, opportunity 
And here you have the title, again, same description. You can just type in your email, you say, I'm interested and that's it. But let's jump into speakers and let's see how the how they compare and contrast. So let's yeah, jump the last, thing, the last thing on the speakers that we want to note is there's, you know, when we're onboarding some of these speakers, you can add the option of, if you're from an underrepresented group, um, yes. you can select that. And so you, if somebody searches in underrepresented, it will filter out and you actually see some of these underrepresented groups. So, um, you know, again, one of the core tenets of this platform is fostering diversity um, and making sure, again, it's a responsibility for the organizers. And so allowing them the opportunity to find uh, that diversity and, and reach out to them, I think is, is super important. Fantastic. Um, so here you have, again, main description, title, and when you click on collaborate, actually, before we do collaborate, here you have the speak on, the speak sub for, so on. And then here are the latest items, whether it's an article this person's posted or a talk that they want to share with you, a video, for example. Like in this case, this is a video. When you click on it, it automatically filters the CMS, shows up the video. If it's a link, for example, it takes you to the other page. So you just have the, like if it's an article, for example. So this way we're, again, simplifying the website instead of having all these other pages with article, you know, an article section, a video section, whatever. It's just like, okay, listen, it's this person's talk. If you want to watch it, it's on YouTube. Here it is. Everything is in one place. And then uh, can we talk about the badges real quick before we collaborate? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, the one, the one other thing that we wanted to create here is and we, wanted, we wanted to respect the speaker's individuality. Uh, yes. We didn't want to just another profile system where everybody looks the same. It's all cookie cutter, right? And so, and, and also kind of staying in line with this, you know, fostering diversity here and, and representing underrepresented groups. The idea around the badge is these will be custom illustrations for, for our pro speakers, the top speakers. And so I've been looking at, there's, there's some amazing tools out there, diversitytech.com, looking for ways that I can find groups of underrepresented illustrators. Um, and so I'll be working with them on this platform to create custom illustrations in a given style for each of the, each of the pro speakers. Um, and you'll see here, yeah, we have an artist section. So I've taken a lot of inspiration from Carabao Poppy, one of my favorite South African designers. She's done just some amazing work. Again, not currently providing illustrations, but it's to give you a good example of, you know, what we're going to be trying to do with the artists here. Um, but yeah, and so that, you know, eventually we, what we want to do is, is we have that badge is, is it's on the profile page, it's on the speaker list. And it's something in, you know, to onboard new speakers as a thank you, we want to send them say a backpack that actually has a patch with their custom design. So I, I'm work, looking at doing that for some of the speakers. I have a, a friend of mine who has a bag company who's willing to offer a, a nice discount for, you know, he believes in this, in this product. So yeah, it's just another way to really share the individuality of some of these speakers and maintain that throughout the platform. Fantastic. And I don't really hear people in these type of industries have those kind of conversations. Like, I want to talk about individuality or underrepresented groups or stuff. They just want to be like, what, what can I do to just increase my bottom line as much as possible? It's so money and industry oriented. And when I talked, it was just a breath of fresh air, which is why, like, I think our sessions just went on because we would talk about the product so much. We wouldn't even notice that, oh shit, we've been here for seven hours now talking mm -hmm. about this product. So I just want to give you the chance to express yourself that way. And I think that it, it was just such an amazing learning experience for me as well. So when you click on collaborate guys, just floats in like this. You get to see, you get to type in your name. So you could just like say like, you know, Sarkis, I am a you know director of marketing. I have a speaking opportunity, writing opportunity, you just kind of like do this. I scheduled for, so you can say May 1st, here's a summary of it, here's my email. Can you please respond by, send the opportunity. Done. There's nothing confusing about this website. But this is where I want to talk to Chris about the automation side just a little bit here. I think uh, we talked about, we talked to Peter about like in this coming week before May 1st, we're going to do something really crazy. We're going to take, just push member stack as far as we possibly can. And we want to integrate Jefferson in there. So I really appreciate your feedback along the way uh, with the platform because we're trying to do something really like, I think pretty complex. We, when you go to the edit, to the profile, you want to edit it. We don't want you to just have these forms where it's like fill out this form or like, type, you know, open up this menu or something. You can just click on that box and immediately change it. Change this photo, Take, click on this text, automatically starts editing again. And the whole platform can kind of be laid out that way. So actually your settings page is your profile page. You would click on anything and just go there. So even when you're signing up, we're gonna show that to you in a second, guys. Uh, it, there is no like, here's this 10 page form you need to fill out you know, to be able to join. Uh, you can just type in your email. Are you a speaker? What are you? 
and immediately takes you straight to that page um, over there. So Chris, do you think like from a searching standpoint, like, like how, how far can we push uh, JetBoost at the moment when it comes to like having these speakers and opportunities, kind of all of it is tying together into kind of this profile page? Because I know like at the bottom you saw, like we have these talks that we want to show. And then we also have like their opportunities and all this, like how do you kind of like picture that from a bird's eye view of coming together? Yeah, you know, the, the great thing about JetBoost and using it with Webflow is that it's so tightly integrated. So any of the data that you have stored in the Webflow CMS, you can make searchable, filterable with JetBoost, you know, including uh, some of the more advanced parts of the Webflow CMS, like, um, you know, different reference collections and multi-references and, um, you know, all these different relationships between data. Uh, JetBoost works with all of that. I think from the, the member stack side of things and, you know, more of the user profile side, um, you'll be able to really do a lot using their platform because they have APIs available. And, um, you know, you might get into bits and pieces where you need to write some custom JavaScript code, but um, it, they, their platform has so much flexibility uh, in that area as well. Fantastic. So we wanted to show you guys the uh, joining and logging in experience real quick. So you click on join, you just have this option here. You can become, I'm a, you, you know, I'm a speaker. I accept, keep me posted. You have this over here, simple login. So just have this really nice pop-up experience. Um, and what you can do is for the, for the login, if we poked off the page, there we go. We had this idea of basically, um, having like the latest feature or the latest like opportunity featured over here. So even turning the login page into something meaningful instead of just put your email and your password in, you know, and, and whatever. So, uh, and that's actually, again, a leaf that, we, uh, that we've been taking uh, from, from Corey again, because I just like, see like when he does a teardown, like he really says like, there's so much more that could have been done. You know, he doesn't just say like, here's what's nice. You know, like he wants to constantly like push it forward for you and say like, we, I also suggest this. So there's just such a great learning experience available in Swipe Files, guys. So please definitely go check that out. Um, I'll steal that for mine too. It's a good idea. Genius. Hashtag growth hacking. <laughs> and I, I see like a teardown of, of uh, Spokable coming, <laughs> coming to Swipe Files at some point. Yeah, tell me, man. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and also for everyone who doesn't know, guys, JetBoost, I never used JetBoost until, uh, until I did the session with Corey. And Je Corey actually helped inspire, um, uh, helped inspire JetBoost to happen. So it's actually interesting how Chris and Corey, they're in San Diego. Like, you want to check out the story, go to, go to our session, our, our JetBoost session. You'll watch. It's incredible <laughs> how it all came together. Um, and now so many, like hundreds of people are now using this and discovering the tool. But guys, as someone who's never used it, I mean, I could say even like, if you're not very technical, again, it just guides you through it and you could just put really, really advanced filtering into, into, your, into your platforms. Like in Corey's case, you know, just we pieced member stack and Jepu so quickly together. It actually shocked me how fast it was. I was assuming there would be like a lot of like reading and maybe watching a bunch of tutorials. It was like, no, the website is the tutorial. You're already doing it. Like, and I, I think that's kind of what I'm missing a lot in products today is just do it, get to it, you know, like stop telling me about it. Stop, you know, showing me it. Like, just, can I experience it now? So Peter, same question to you, sir. What's your main goal by the end of the year? Yeah. I mean, the, the first step is, is onboarding speakers. Um, and so making sure that that process is seamless for them to input their information and, and figure out how to implement, you know, similar to Quentin, a, a nice referral system. Um, so really have those networks expand. And so, you know, my thought process was, and Michael touched upon it, which is interesting. You know, if, if I, you know, if I choose that initial group of speakers who I have, you know, I've built a network over the past few years, I trust, I trust them, um, because I know I've seen them do it. I trust them to also refer the right people, um, and build that group that way. Um, but continue to continue to hammer on the value to the speaker. And, you know, if we build it, they'll build it, you know, so they'll help, you know, provide more information. And, and so we'll hone it, get it better to a point where, you know, it's a very attractive thing for the speakers to join and, and they're getting a major value out of it. Uh, I think the personalization is the name of the game with your platform. 
just the level of like thought you've put into, hey, even like having these badges, even having this, it just adds a level of personality that most of these websites just couldn't even dream of having because they don't think about, hey, how can I make this human? Like you were, we were looking at Speaker Hub and some of these other tools when we first talked. And I actually told you, I was like, well, there are bigger tools, aren't there? Like that can, that can do so. And then you, I, I discovered the term speaker bureau. <laughs> and then I understood exactly what you're doing. Anti-bureau, man. Anti-bureau. We don't, we don't want professional speakers, to be honest with you. We want folks that are really, are, are working and honing their craft and they can share those stories. We want, we want them to share the story about the, the thing they worked on last week. So you see like someone like Michael, Niraj, Chris, like getting on stage or like, would they be the ideal users for a platform like this? Absolutely. And I think it, you know, also, you know, we will start it with, with speakers that have experience. We've shown that, but, you know, really it's also an opportunity to get young aspiring speakers, the experience and, and the exposure that they deserve and they need, you know, it's, it's tough to get that, you know, get the ball rolling. And so, you know, I think eventually as this, the, the platform transforms and evolves, we'll have an opportunity, we'll have a, some sort of section opportunity for, you know, up and comers um, so they can get their feet up with some speaking experience. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for the opportunity. And I wanted to say just, you know, thank you yes. so much, man, for all this. Just looking at the fact that we're on the sixth, sixth, fifth or sixth platform. You did this in a month. I'm blown away, man. You know, I think this started from the fact that I saw one of your play, PlayStation rebuilds. And what you showed to us is what the heck is possible with no code. And, you know, I've been sitting, I've wanted, been wanting to do this idea for years, man. And like with your inspiration, like, wow, it can be done. You know, in the evolution of some of these tools with member stack and jet, you know, jet boost, you know, five months ago, I, for a project, I couldn't Im implement filters that we needed. We absolutely were critical to a project. And, you know, now this convergence of all the evolution of tools and your inspiration, man, has made this whole possible. So thank you very much for all, all you've done, man. Appreciate it. You're making me blush, dude. Uh, I think the reason the no code rumble happened is because each of us put us uh, on, on the edge of our seat. Like none of us could slack off. Like we all, no matter how exhausted we were, we were like, we can't let each other down. I think that if it was just me and Michael, for example, working on a project, or it was just me and Ritika or just me and Quentin or something, it wouldn't have happened. Because I know for a fact, Quentin, how many times did we reschedule our sessions? How many times, Andrew, did we have to change something? It's like, there's always something that comes up, right? But then we was like, oh shit, but you know, we want to show this during demo day. Like, um, I, I, I am blown away by your, every one of you, like your resilience to pull this off is nuts to me. <laughs> so I think you're, you're, the real thing that's inspiring everyone is actually the only thing more inspiring than the products is you. So I want that to be the next thing where like, you've set the bar now where it's like, you know, like we were so different in terms of products that what's your excuse for not working on your product, on your dream, right? Uh, Jack, is there any feedback from the community in YouTube? No, not so far. No, not on, not on um, Peter's yet, but I'll, I'll uh, shall I, yeah, I'll try yes, and interrupt. Any questions. If any questions for the other products to come up, just uh, let us know before uh, we're almost uh, towards the end of the end of the session. Yeah, the product product looks uh, super great. Um, and so are you planning to, to uh, have other companies sign up to find speakers? Have you ever talked to the companies and what, have, has there been any feedback on that? Yeah, absolutely. That, you know, that's, I, I think first things first for me, you know, and with limited bandwidth is the focus on getting the speakers on the platform and that's going to help with attracting some of these, uh, some of these companies. And I have spoken to some organizers. There's some things that they re are really focused on. They want to see the networks. That's one thing that we, we haven't been able to show is they want to see how wide the networks and uh, of some of these speakers speakers are, it makes them particularly more attractive um, because it's not just, they're not just providing an amazing story and creating better content, but they're also sharing it, you know, to, to their vast networks. And that's, that's, I know Corey knows and, and Quentin and uh, Jack, you know, as marketers, that's hugely important. We need, we need to get that, that word out there and, and spread that sp spread the, the event. So, yeah, I think there's a couple of things that we need to, to work towards to make it more attractive for organizers, like adding, you know, number of Twitter followers or whatnot. Um, but I think the most attractive thing in the folks I've talked to is the quality and quantity of speakers and how specific they are to the topics that you care about. Thanks guys. Um, and two messages we got from Jack and Corey. Uh, they can't wait to test it out and jump on. So uh, we're going to be uh, bringing on badges, man, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that's actually something I emphasize from the beginning, guys. We're all going to be sharing the services with each other. 
Um, that was my only caveat when I got into this, uh, to inspire each other to do this. Um, uh, so now we're going to be traveling to Puerto Rico. Steven Hilario, my friend. So we actually added some of the finishing touches uh, just uh, this evening, actually, right before <laughs> demo day. So uh, tell us a little bit about you, Build, and how it all started, how we inspired each other, how this crazy journey began. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Steven, and <clears throat> we have been building you, Build, in the past few weeks with Saco. And I want to give thanks to Saco for all the sacrifices uh, oh. staying up late at night. And this has been a rough uh, weeks with the virus and everything. And to make this story short, uh, I remember when Saco um, built um, the PlayStation and the space, PlayStation rebuild, and I was just blown away by it. So I just um, tested uh, Saco uh, through Twitter, and I, and I, I asked him, hey, Saco, why can't we... Um, make a web page um, showing these and showcasing these rebuilds. And he was like, let's, sure, let's do it. So that was before the Rumble. But after we started um, the Rumble, we slowly started um, adding more categories uh, to U-Build. And the main uh, objective of U-Build is to discover the latest and greatest Webflow projects from across the web. And uh, one of the main, the first category was rebuild, which is was inspired by Saco with the PlayStation rebuild. Uh, the second one is going to be fresh builds, which is going to be prototypes and products from makers around the world. The other category is going to be quick builds, which is going to be ma uh, makers building uh, no code no code on builds in a matter of minutes to showcase the power of no codes. So that's been the main idea of you build, showcasing the power of no code in this area. Fantastic. Um, and I think actually our discussion was actually what motivated me to, in the end, do the no code rumble, because I just thought, what I mean, I built a PlayStation Pro that for fun. I was like, I just want to show everyone that you can do more than landing pages with these no-code tools. You can do so much more with it. And then when you came and said, let's do Rebuild, I was like, what if we actually built websites in like a month and we showed them <laughs> like what's possible? <laughs> and then that became the no-code rumble and kind of grew from there, dude. So I really appreciate you reaching out to me. Um, without further ado, let's jump in. Let's go to you build. We went with a custom, very interesting approach for you build that I really enjoyed. So check this out. First, uh, I mean, do, don't worry about the videos and kind of the graphics and stuff. That's going to be changing. These are all placeholders. But discover the latest and greatest Webflow projects from across the web developed by makers from across the world. And what you have here is a persistent menu at the top. You have you build, rebuilds, quick builds, fresh builds, and future builds. That was the one thing. So upcoming builds. This is a great opportunity to kind of encourage people to join, like, you know, share their upcoming projects. Um, and what happens is when you actually hover, there's going to be a lot of interesting, you know, tidbits we're adding uh, before May 1st, where when you hover here, like it just turns, each category has its own color, which is really gives it a nice personalization. I wanted this to be such a visual treat when you came to this website that like in the background, instead of seeing this kind of visual graphic, what you're going to be seeing is people building. You're going to see in real time how like tools like Webflow and Bubble and all these things kind of come together. We are focusing primarily on Webflow right now, because if you really think about rebuilds and things like this, Webflow is the most efficient tool for that. Like a lot of these other tools are a little more complex. I mean, Bubble is extremely powerful, for example, but extremely <laughs> difficult <laughs> to use. Um, uh, so I know they're, you know, shout out to their team. They're doing amazing work. I know they're coming out with a new experience soon. But uh, yeah, so we felt like Webflow would be primarily the projects we feature with some exceptions. Now, when we scroll down, you'll notice how the projects is kind of show up here. And each category has a screenshot of that experience. You, and each one has a tag. So each tag, so rebuilds is blue, for example. Let's go back. This one is blue. This one is red. You have quick builds. You have the rebuilds again. So like the PlayStation 4 that uh, when, um, we were talking about earlier. We have 
tools here. We have fresh builds. We have every, all kinds of different services here and plus secret builds. So like you have to sign up to get those. Um, so once a month, we're going to be sending out these special builds that you just cannot find on this website. So again, like personalizing your content, right? So Peter, I mean, you and I talked about this too. Like how can we, you know, like personalize these, these, uh, these speakers and their, when their offerings without just kind of like making it feel like it's just a directory, you know what I mean? Um, and over here at the bottom, you'll see how, when you hover, you just get this nice color, just breaking out of that darkness. So again, using colors effectively, we just didn't want to make this like a typical looking website. This needs to really, you know, have its own unique flair. So let's jump into one of these products, shall we? So when you click on PlayStation 4, this is the one that we were talking about earlier. Here, when you scroll down, you get like a short description. And here you can immediately see, you can immediately see the experience of how this was built. You can preview it. So you can just go to the dedicated page. You can go to playstation.webflow.io. You can just jump straight in. Here it is. You can just kind of see how it works. You know, the full experience. And what the structure that we use is like in the website, it just looks like a building, like building blocks coming together here. So here on the left, you have a video where you can watch like a preview of this, of this build, how it was built or just us scrolling through the website and giving you like a little preview. So this content is gonna be on YouTube guys. So this is gonna be really great for, from a marketing standpoint. Uh, on the right, we have the preview. Here we have a short description title and we have three buttons, your website, your profile, your Webflow profile and your Twitter profile. And then a pro picture on the right, followed by again, the, seat, uh, the, uh, the content over here at the bottom, the social buttons. Um, now let's go to another one. Let's see, for example, if we go to Airbnb, how that would look. So this was done by Nelson, Webflow, Pixel Geek on YouTube. Now here you'll see you have two buttons. You have cloning and you have previewing. So this is again, a great way to uh, share this content. We didn't want this to be just, you know, kind of like a directory with like little pages with a little preview. We wanted this to really be a celebration of rebuilds, of U builds, of quick builds and everything. And here, like you can go, you know, straight in again, the video automatically come, comes, uh, comes from the CMS. Here's like an hour and a half. Nelson did a wonderful job creating this. Um, and this really is a celebration of no-code tools, of what's possible and what these rumble, uh, you know, I really see everyone else's rumblers too. No-code makers in general, are, in general are rumblers. They're testing new ideas. They're doing things that just five, maybe not even five, just a couple of years ago would have been crazy. You know, people forget that e-commerce was not really available, you know, in Webflow until like, you know, recent. So, you know, these tools are progressing so fast and we want to be able to showcase those experiences. Now with quick builds, this is something I wanted to highlight. Here you can see how in a matter of minutes, what people can create. So this was inspired by the no-code uh, challenge that I set up in February. I just decided this year that, you know, while I'm on my own break for my own work, for my own teams I'm working with, I just decided I'm going to like launch this no-code challenge and challenge the community to create something special in the no-code space in three minutes. And some of the, actually many of the people on the call right now actually joined in that session too with using different no-code tools to do it, whether it's automation or it's Webflow or Bubble or something else. And here you can see how I'm actually building the FaceTime app. And when you click on it, you know, it goes to that page, you get a little you know, teaser, whatever. You can get a preview of it. You can watch a video again. And this is a great way for these makers to actually show what they're doing, what's possible, instead of just you know, saying, here's my Webflow page, click on it and you know, that's it. So here really fast, you can watch it. So many people reached out to us actually, Stephen, like during the, you remember, like during the <laughs> building process, they said like, yeah. you know, where are all these no-code challenges? Can I watch them again? Is it on YouTube? Was it available? And I just realized, why don't we just make quick builds a category? And now, so to everyone who's been waiting eagerly for that, that's gonna be available very soon. So that's gonna be available in the website. So that was uh, just a quick preview guys of, uh, of you build. Um, how do you, uh, what do you think, Stephen? Like, where do you think where this is going to go? Well, yeah, this is a very straightforward um, build showcasing these projects. And I think um, um, in the future, I would like to uh, go in the no-code scene and try and um, focus on other projects to see if they can, <clears throat> if those projects are, all, if those tools are also as powerful, let's see if, they, if we can make rebuilds in them too or quick builds. 
And uh -huh. also like fresh builds, fresh builds is something that really excites me. Like um, these new platforms and tools that are being created that we want to highlight. Like, I mean, I think we all agree, like when you go to the Webflow showcase, you know, there's just so much noise, so many, like, I mean, it's wonderful having, you know, people testing the tool and whatever, but you know, it's, it's tough filtering through all of that content. So like having a website that just features the best of the best, you know, there are like websites and designs out there that just run circles around the PlayStation prototype I've done. Like, and I, I love how, you know, we're going to be featuring that. So I think this is going to be a, a great way of kind of bring bridging together these makers from around the world. So um, hats off to you guys, any feedback for Quint, uh, any feedback for the, for our team here, Steven? feels super inspiring as a platform like it's it's early days with it like most of us like we want to populate it with content but it just feels so inviting to like you know like i love how you've broken out the categories at the top like i, I didn't see that <laughs> yeah, we've heard that a lot <laughs> i really like that yeah it's great it, it doesn't really even feel like a menu right it feels almost like a game like you know like you have you know your your st statistics here you kind of have that there so we were That's thinking like, about it feels yeah. really like a like a social media platform like this like these these categories just feel really quick and like it's not a website yeah there's something about it i can't articulate it it's great yeah. awesome uh chris you just mentioned uh, something about secret builds uh you want to share that with steven real quick is chris still with us yeah no i was just saying i i think uh using the terminology secret builds is is brilliant copy it's it's much more intriguing to me i want to know what these secret builds are versus if you just called it something like premium builds yeah that's, that's really true steven what do you think of that we actually yeah, came up with that today didn't we that was very recent yeah the, the, um, most of uh, some of the, these ideas we came out this this week like like quick builds it's well, always just kind of like serendipitously coming together so and that's why with the website guys you'll notice there's no like we didn't do this thing where the content is centered and you have this white page. It's all just building blocks. Like when you're scrolling down the page, you'll notice how they just kind of connect with each other. Like you're building a building, like you're building an app. So you build, I feel like, again, visually, my, my, my approach to product design is the product needs to embody what you're trying to say. So what, if it's a uh, spokable, for example, again, like how do we tell that, you know, make it feel like you're connecting that speaker, no code mentors. You know, like, what does that mentor look like? Can I talk to that mentor? You know, like all these kind of elements. And I wanted to kind of imbue that into every one of these products. And I think we're, we've gotten close. This is like a great kind of foundation of like where we can build on top of that, you know, pun intended. Uh, and I see have where... a question about it, yes. actually. Do you have a page where you're going to show like all the different people behind it? Because that would be really awesome to see a page of blocks of different people's faces, like big like face, small face, and just like this huge kind of pixelated pixelated screen of all the different people and you could just click on them and see all of their stuff um yeah, yeah so like, you and i talked about this right like having um having the uh the, pro the build actually being essentially kind of a profile page for that person but i think the, this idea is really interesting like having yeah. just the the same style of like showing makers just coming together like this and you can kind of see like this maker made five projects this one made what do you think about that that looks like a like a good idea for the future yeah and we can, that could be a good way to integrate member stack, a good excuse to integrate member stack. And also, uh, yeah, and something else is like, we, uh, I think Jetboost again down the line, especially with the maker side would be fantastic. And I'm yeah. thinking that we would need to think of not just like name, because you don't know a lot of these makers. We need to think of other ways you could filter, like find that content, you know, instead of just saying like recent builds or whatever, like we need to really think about that. So. Uh, I'm really excited for the journey ahead. Steven, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you too. This brings us guys to the final two rumblers. And I specifically left these two rumblers towards the end because this is the most interesting challenge I've faced, not just during the last month or two, but in my life. So, so I'm gonna, I wanna engage both of you. Ladies, thank you so much for trusting me enough <laughs> jumping on this, this ride because we have two products that are perfectly different from each other. And also from a, pro from a difficulty standpoint, from a challenging standpoint, they're, sh they're sharing a similar challenge. So now guys, we're gonna go to Bangalore, India, and we're gonna go to Birmingham, Alabama, that right next door, they're stones throw away from each other. <laughs> um, how's everything out there, guys? It's all right, we're, um, we're I think, 
ending our so-called lockdown in a few days. So that's going to be interesting. Oh, it's actually ending but, in Bangalore? I mean, it's not exactly ending, but the restrictions are sort of ending on Monday morning. Uh, so it's, everyone's trying to figure out what it means. And then there is a different ending that's happening on May 1st. So yeah. it, no one knows what's exactly going to happen. So we're all waiting to see what the rules are going to be. But gotcha. it's been interesting. Um, yeah. My sister is in Bombay and she's like, we cannot even leave the house until June. Yeah, like, Bombay what is, is a mess. Bombay like, like Peter was me, yeah, Peter was telling me like people are still going in Central Park, like running in the morning. It's like they don't even know. Like, <laughs> you know, it's it's cool. There are some inspiring things. At seven o'clock, everybody has cowbells and are screaming. And it's I was going to share that. It's really amazing, inspiring. And then like maybe like ten minutes later, I heard an argument on the street. People yelling from like, oh, we're still in New York here. We're, st- <laughs> we're still that that love and hate. <laughs> not care. New York does not care what pandemic. They're like, listen, we're New Yorkers, okay? <laughs> like, yeah, we're way. <laughs> but uh, how's that everything in Alabama? Man, I mean, I think compared to Hertha's situation, I don't really have room to say much. It's almost like utopia compared to what you guys are dealing with. Um, you know, it's pretty calm. Um, you know, people, there's definitely, you know, it's kind of like a ghost town downtown where I live, but, um, you know, they're talking, they are talking about lifting restrictions. And so there's a big, you know, to do about if it's, we're ready for that or, or whatever. But, um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's pretty, pretty decent here. Wow. I know you were in Mexico, uh, before getting back to Alabama. How was that flight back? (laughs) Well, I was, we were on the phone yesterday and I was like, well, we got upgraded to first class, but they couldn't give us anything in first class. Like they weren't serving <laughs> drinks. It was like, you're, you got the same prepackaged snacks you got back in like plebeian class. So I was like, well, this bigger seat is nice. <laughs> um, but I mean, uh, is the situation as bad in Mexico uh, or you know, out there in these other countries? Like, uh, No, I mean, the situation is about the same. Like when we left Mexico, it was actually worse here than it was there. And um, like a girlfriend of mine, she's still there. And she's like, I mean, it's, you know, sometimes you see people wearing masks and some things are closed. You know, that's nothing too crazy. Well, Chiang Mai is uh, very peaceful right now. I know, I know, uh, Crystal, you've been to Chiang Mai before. Um, So, you know, out here, like there have been barely any, uh, there have been no deaths actually in Chiang Mai, thank God. Um, It's been kind of like, you know, out here so far but yeah lockdown i think was absolutely necessary and uh, i think the states just didn't tackle that soon enough so my, my heart goes out to all of you i know how tough it is out there so stay safe and uh thank you for building this between two countries with me <laughs> so, so oh let's, my uh, god you pushed me so far outside of my comfort zone with this <laughs> i mean I, we got done with our I session agree. yesterday yeah we got done with our session yesterday and my girlfriend nicole who had joined she's like how are you feeling and i'm like i'm fucking wrecked Completely right. I need a I'm nap. Sorry. I'm going to say sorry, not sorry, because your products are so amazing that I have to make sure we pull this off. Because, I mean, I told Michael from the start, this is not going to be a hackathon. If that means me changing my schedule for the next six months, I, I believe in this so much that, you know, we have to make this work. So thank you so much for sticking with me, guys. Um, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a great session. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like uh, the no code rumble again, like, Problem number one, I want to compare it to insured nomads real quick. Uh, so the products we're talking about, real quick, guys, uh, we'll, we'll, let the, we'll let our amazing rumblers talk about their products in a second. Uh, I want to just share the challenge so you understand why we're discussing this. Now. The first challenge is insured nomads had too much content that we had to bring down. Crystal's product is tackling taxes for nomads. It's less content, but illegible. So you have to be able to like explain these concepts to people without just saying, you know what, don't even worry about it. I, I want them to worry about it. I want them to care about taxes. You know, it's a, that's the point. I know people who got screwed over because of that, you know, just because they're like, you know what, I can't even, I would rather go to jail than have to worry about all this little jargon over here. Like, I feel like I'm going to end up there anyways at this rate. So like when Crystal talked to me about how she's a nomad and she's like, I actually have this background so I can actually help people. This was she did this before the no-code rumble, before no-code at all. Like, I, I don't know. Have you been yeah. exposed to no-code tools a lot? <laughs> yeah, no, but I do think I'm the oldest product in the rumble because we've been around for about 18 months, like as, as a company. So, but, and yeah, you're already generating revenue. Like I know a couple of products are in the rumble are already generating revenue, which is fantastic. Congrats. Um, and I think that hopefully the work we've been doing 
uh, is going to help you like elevate, you know, elevate your products even more. Um, but yeah, the challenge was guys with, with Nomad Tax, we wanted to help you not just buy a package, but actually understand what it is you're getting into. And then with Hrithika's product, I want to give you just a little bit of background. It was no good, uh, K-N-O-W, good. And Hrithika came and said, I want to do a platform that creates alternatives to unhealthy products. It was such a great start. But then it's like, okay, that is such a broad market. How do we actually filter that down? Where do we go from here? Um, and we managed to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the core of that product until we basically landed on, on Earth, uh, which is the rebranding of the product. And we had so many sessions. I had so many amazing sessions with Ritika and with Crystal over the past few weeks of just discussing and understanding the product where we realized this is not something you just push out the gate. You have to let the content speak. So in Ritika's case, we are unearthing these unique physical products, not virtual products. That's the hard part of that platform is like understanding how to tell the stories of local makers, starting with India and then going around the world and allowing, giving people like us, like Michael, like Andrew, like Corey, like everybody, an opportunity to actually find these artisans, these artists, these makers and say, this is for you. Like, let's unearth this kind of like great big story, like on YouTube, you know, going, spending three minute videos, whatever, unearthing the products. But in this case, it's actually like highlighting them on a more personal level. So we have to really understand like, What's the story we're telling? What's that CMS going to look like? Uh, are we going to let, who are we letting in, who are not letting in? So same like no-code mentors, like Spokable, uh, like all these other tools, like how do we filter that? So that was really, really grueling for us. Like we had hours and hours of just like trying to figure this out. And we finally are like coming close to nailing it. And that, that is, those discussions have influenced our design so much that I just felt like this is not one of those things where I just built something in Webflow and say, hey, let's just slap your ideas into this structure and just give it off and be like, hey, we're finished with no-code rumble. So uh, what we decided, guys, is that by May 1st, we're gonna spend the extra 10 days that we have to. We're not gonna show you the products just yet. We're gonna spend the extra time we need to to put those finishing touches, to get that structure right, and then reveal it in time for May 1st for the voting to begin. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to start with Ritika. Please tell us about Unearth. Tell us why you're so passionate about it. You've been killing yourself on that, on the structure <laughs> side. Uh, and also a little bit about your background and how you got into this. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I mean, by day, I'm a product marketer, I work with like SaaS companies. So this is completely different from um, what I do by day. Uh, but this actually came out of my desire to um, unearth a lot of local makers and products that don't really like they're deserving of it but they don't really get a chance to be seen online because most of these makers that I've met like uh, they don't know how to do it either they don't have the bandwidth to do it or they just don't know how to really go about it right like some of these products that I have seen uh, I just see them lying around in a store and then it would intrigue me because of the way it's made or like what you know, like the material it's made out of, which is completely like an alternate to the way things are made today. And I get curious about it. And then I figure out who's behind that product. And then I go down that path to figure out, okay, so here's the maker behind this particular thing. So mm -hmm. I was thinking that um, why not actually have like a platform that um, gives them like a deserving uh, place, um, a platform that, um, pushes products that have a unique way to build like build out a physical product they, there's a problem but they've solved it in a very unique way or uh, the makers know their craft so well that they deserve to be um, spoken about on this platform um, and like i said many of them have a zero they have zero presence online so we really want to like go in there find out their stories see like you know what the soul of these products are and tell these stories out there uh, most of the pro platforms you see online that are also maybe selling some of these products would just have them lying there. There'd be a bunch of tags and, and it would be the usual, the cookie cutter approach to it. Uh, and no one really knows what the story behind those products are at mm -hmm. all. Um, and so that's what Unearthed wants to do. That's what we want to do with Unearthed is to be able to tell their stories and teach them a little bit about how they can tell their stories. Um, so that, and, and that is something that I've already seen with a bunch of like, um, stories that I've been trying to write about these makers. I think there's a lot of value that they get from someone taking so much interest in their product. And, um, so I think that that's really what I want to do with Unearth and, um, 
a lot of it, like Saka said, has evolved from the first conversation we had. Uh, initially, I really wanted to focus on um, only things that are like healthy for you and good for you and good alternatives. But I realized that uh, there's there's this platform that's missing for a broader bunch of people. So it could be like musicians who are just creating um, a completely different musical instrument. Like Saka knows someone who uh, is is has made an alternative to a to a cello, for instance, right? So these kinds of stories, I think, and these kinds of makers really need a platform. So that's what Anna really does to put it in a short way. And also for us to ensure that we're able to uh, kind of scale across and, and be able to bring these stories. I mean, it's great that I uh, have access to all of you from different parts of the world. So if you all know any makers that are making something really unique that we should go down and figure out their stories for, then I definitely want to get in touch with you. But um, the idea is also that we want to expand the community of unearthers so that we can be truly global in bringing these makers out to the forefront. Um, so that's the idea and that's where the vision of this uh, eventually is. Like I want it to be a platform for makers and a platform for more unearthers to come together. So we're really bringing out stories from parts of the world that we probably never even heard of. Um, and ultimately, I want people to think by looking at these makers, more people should be inspired to become makers. Sort of like what's happening with the Rambu as well. Like we're all doing this and I'm sure people who are watching it are getting inspired to really get down to their ideas and like create something out of it. So I want to do the same thing with the physical product world, like where you watch, um, you see these stories coming out there and then there's someone like, hey, you know, I think I want to think about this the same way, like, or there's this problem, here's how I would go about solving it. So the way we tell the story on Unearth will definitely be, uh, should inspire people to do that. Um, so yeah, so that's in a sense what it is. Um, the, the story, I love how you ended with the story. That, that's the difficult part. I mean, Corey and I talked about this too, right? Like we went through so many different ideas of like, okay, maybe the picture on the left and like a text on the right, maybe we could do like a, this. And then we just simplified it all down to that pure essence of what this can be. And it became swipe files. And I just felt like because your product is so physical maker oriented, like telling that story, you have to really think about like, okay, like you mentioned, there are these people making like their their bee farmers, or like you have this company that you know does this thing, or like this person who was a basket weaver but does it in such a unique way that this person doesn't even know what the internet is. <laughs> like you're not going to go there with like with your big literally like big great big story camera and be like this drones flying over or whatever. Like you want to go there and really get you know in touch with them. And the musician that uh, Ritka was mentioning, his name is Manuk in Armenia, super talented composer. Like he understands music like better than uh, like there are very few people that understand like him but again you would never know where he is he does not have a website doesn't have any of that so i was thinking like Ritka, i was like what if i was an unearther what if i could go and unearth that product and i could be like sako unearthed manuk's cello like and that whole website the whole kind of name just branding just came together so perfectly at that time when we started talking i was like oh my i have to spend another week on this there's no way i'm just going to be pushing this out the gate otherwise i could just set up a cms put some items on page put in some amazing jet boost and be like we're done you know let, let's move on right um but i Ritik, I, I appreciate you sticking it out and just kind of focusing on your vision enough to say i will not publish this until we are ready so that's awesome to me. And also guys, from a newsletter standpoint, again, talking about great content, right? Uh, what we're doing with Unearthers, like Unearthers could be like a monthly, it could be a six month, once every six months kind of post. Ritika is not gonna be like spamming you with like, hey, here's some articles about good products. Like she is going to be only talking to you when it's like Ritika unearthed this. She wants to become essentially like the Lori Bream like the QVC queen, if you will, like the Unearther queen <laughs> of these original makers. So what happens eventually is that if you ever get an email from her saying that, hey, I just unearthed something, you know it's freaking incredible. Like you have to go check it out. And then in the meantime, to solve the content lack of content, I mean, the content is so great that even if you have one post, it's fantastic. But having, uh, you have to have regular content. So we did, we created, we use this, whole, set up this whole Instagram strategy where what happens is we let the community unearth and hashtag and say hashtag unearthed uh, and they're going to be finding these things, and this is going to help Kritika find these makers. So really, such a powerful 
kind of you know social kind of uh, uh, experience here to kind of tie it all together. And something else she's also going to be doing is the videos. We have this again. I want to push this limitation, right? We talked about like, okay, Ritika does not have, you know, uh, she can't spend $100,000 on every episode <laughs> of, of every product that she's doing, right? Um, she's not Lori Green just yet, but she's getting there. So what we're thinking is like, she can go use the iPhone, whatever she's using, and we'll create a format in the platform that is very up and close and personal with that maker. So what happens is it just feels natural. Don't you feel like when you watch these high-end 4K documentaries, it just doesn't feel like I'm there. It just feels like, oh, it's a very high value, you know, a very high quality, whatever. But when you see a basket weaver and you can just see that, get up and close, see the hands, see how this person's doing that product. It just adds such a human touch. And it feels like, yeah, like I walked down this street, I took a left and then I found this person and then here's what it was. You could encourage anybody to do this in any part of the world and eventually become the most local down to earth product, you know, platform in the world. And that's to me, as someone who's grown up in India for 10 years, who's like works with artists and, you know, always tries to elevate them in some way. I think your platform would be in the center of that. I don't know any platform today where I would be like, I want Manu to go to that platform. Like, what am I going to say? Go to Twitter, you know, like automate your experience. I can't do that. Like these people don't even know how to use these tools. So I think the fact that you're thinking about the Mirtika, like I just have so much, so much respect for that, that, you know, you didn't just take the easy route. Um, and I think that difficulty, the, the struggle you're going to go through um, is, is going to help you just build such an amazing platform. Um, Thanks. Yeah. I mean, and I think you've um, really pushed me to think at so many different levels. Um, and I think that there'll, have, there'll be more of that next week as well, because we're oh, definitely. at the end of this. So... <laughs> So, I mean, often I think when I'm speaking to Sarko, like the call gets done and then I'm thinking about it for two days after that. And I'm just like, wait, so how do we solve this problem? So that, that, that's nice. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. <laughs> just like Ritika just said this thing that stumped me. I got to go figure this out now. <laughs> so, but, uh, oh, but honestly, like, it's crazy, but I wish I could record all these sessions, guys. Like we have like... You never know when that nugget, that gem, that amazing yeah. moment can come up. But we can't record every four-hour <laughs> session that we have and bore you to tears. So what we're trying to do is I'm trying to record like short two-minute segments of like this is what we discuss and stuff. But you know I don't know how we're gonna do it. Maybe next year, Michael, uh, you know we'll, we'll come up with a better approach to you know like we're we're really building. No Cut Rumble is really the ninth product that we built <laughs> during the last few months of like this could mm -hmm. become a whole platform on its own. So I think we've learned so much about like okay. Maybe content should be delivered this way. Maybe uh, setting up a YouTube live session should be done this other way. <laughs> it's been it's been really interesting learning all this. Uh, thanks again, Ritka. Any feedback, guys, for Ritka before we move on? Yeah, I think I think the um, the concept of activating folks to unearth things is is a really smart, sharp one. And it can help you out with it. Instagram is really smart. For example, I talked to a girl that I know in Mexico about about this project, you know, Sako has been sneaking some information to me. Sorry. It's, um, but she's like, Oh, I, I, she, she named everybody kind of, everybody kind of around the world knows that one or two people or that, that thing that they've seen in past that they can share. She's like, I know this Swiss maker makes, I think it was blankets that they actually might not even be able to like stay in business now because they're just so niche and not known. They don't know how to use online. I mean, you're really enabling, you know, some of these makers to stay in business and keep creating their art, which is art. And it's it's uh it's a it's a great project. I really believe in it. Yeah, definitely put me in touch. We can get, or probably connect after this call. So let's see what we can do there. But thanks, guys. We just had a marketing. We had a marketing design uh, uh, speakers oriented person from New York just inspire someone in Bangalore to connect with someone in Switzerland. Okay, if that doesn't <laughs> if that doesn't capture the the vision of the no code rumble and what no code space is all about, I don't know what does. <laughs> so that's. My friend just sent me the name, so I'll send it right over to you. Okay. Thanks. And I forgot to mention, guys, in the actual page, like the feature at page of that um, of that maker, there's going to be campaign sections oh. that actually like contribute to that person to actually like here's my goal of like you know you know Peter you know like the like a GoFundMe page right but instead of like funding one particular thing you're basically helping this person throughout their life. Like there's going to be always new goals, new opportunities he wants to unlock or she wants to unlock. And uh, Ritika has been giving me so many ideas of like, 
like, I, I want to do this thing too, this other thing. And I'm like, okay, how do I adapt the design to this? So thank you guys for giving us the time to kind of like flesh this out and not rushing us uh, to the finish line. Thank you. Uh, and finally, Crystal, last and absolutely not least. Um, uh, I wanna... So you saved the biggest mess for last. <laughs> <laughs> the best is for last. Uh, I think, I think uh, no, the discussion, I, I wanted us to discuss this for the final, uh, at the final moment uh, because our discussion last night was so meaningful to me about your product that I think this would be super, a great cliffhanger uh, for, for this demo day. Uh, tell us a little bit about Nomad Tax and then we can share what we discussed yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I started my career as a tax candidate. You know, I kind of did the traditional tax firm where I was buckled into my office chair for 80 hours a week um, most of the time. Um, and I, I gave that life up to become a digital nomad. Um, but what kind of happened is while I was traveling, I noticed that a lot of digital nomads had a ton of questions about taxes, right? Um, and, you know, obviously one day one of my friends was like, would you please just quit giving away all of your advice for free? Um, and that's basically how Nomad Tax was born. Um, you know, I really love, I traveled for, you know, two and a half, three years in the digital nomad community. Obviously the tide has changed a little bit, um, you know, but, you know, looking forward to definitely being a part of that. And like my passion is with helping people, right? And the community itself is so welcoming and so open, um, you know, kind of, you know, nomad tax is my way of giving back to that community, right? Um, we talk all the time, you know, and Andrew's very familiar with this, you know, how do you get nomads to care about insurance and care about taxes and realize, you know, that they, they do need to go kind of um, a professional route with it. Um, we really want to steer away from that word professional, right? I mean, I really said, like, I don't want to be your father's accounting firm, right? We don't want to be buttoned <laughs> up. Um, you know, we're dealing with digital nomads, right? I mean, they're not going to respond to, you know, some guy who's wearing a tie in the middle of summer, you know? I mean, like, um, you know, so we wanted to take this really kind of laid back approach to it. Um, so there's a, there's a challenge with that, right? You know, so you have to come across as, as professional and um, qualified, right? But at the same time, you're like, yeah, we're like laid back because, you know, Sar Sargo and I have talked about this a lot. The biggest selling point is that like, I am a nomad. So I know what your life is like, right? And our entire team is nomads too. I mean, this whole thing is built and run by nomads. Um, so, you know, we're trying to tell, you know, communicate to our audience that, you know, we have all of this knowledge that you can benefit from and we understand your situation. Um, so, you know, getting those two messages across is <laughs> <It's> not easy. <laughs> it's definitely a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. And I swear to God, like last night, right before we got off the phone, Sargo gave me one of like, the biggest challenges of my life. And he's like, I need you to explain accounting to me. And I don't understand accounting. And I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me, right? So yeah, I was actually laying in bed this morning. And instead of, you know, like sleeping in on a nice sleepy Saturday morning, I was thinking about Sacco. But, um, you know, I had a I had an aha moment. And I so I pick up my phone and immediately. I'm like voice noting him. And I was like, Oh, my God, I was laying in bed. And I had this thought of this is how we could do it. What do you think? You know, but anyways, um, but I want to, this is, yeah, this is where the cliffhanger comes in. So with Nomad Tax guys, we want to build the complete opposite of a tax website, the complete opposite of an insurance website of anything like that. And I just, when I told Nicole, Nicole stopped by as well oh, in Costa Rica, right? She's in Costa Rica at the moment. Yeah, she's in Costa Rica. So she, I just, I talked to Nicole, I talked to Crystal and I said, guys, what if we just stripped out all that text, all that copy. And we just said, when you come to this page, it is completely service driven. You're going to be able to flow through and be like, welcome to Nomad Tax. You know, it's like, you can kind of like what we, uh, what I did with uh, Insured Nomads um, of having like guide me or insure me. Here would be like, you know, I'm new or I'm back. And you'd be able to immediately flow down from there. And it would lay out these main pain points where it'd be like, like in human language. I don't want to talk about like, what was that article you mentioned? Like the 1099 article? No, 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 no. I love it because Sarko goes, what is the 1099 report? I was like, it's, it's, a, it's 1099. <laughs> but I mean, this is our problem, right? You know, sex, I don't know what that is. I don't even want to know. But if you can make me care, that's the thing. That if you can make me care. And then when you explain it to me, how do you, how do you explain it to me? Go ahead. I was You're like, well... Yeah, I'm like, if you pay a contractor more than $600, you have to file an annual report. 
that's it. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> instead, like you could just explain that to a five-year-old instead of just saying, we do 1099 reports. We also do the 190. 1099 is the bag of potatoes I bought the other day. You know, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't really want to go into all these corporate, you know, whatever kind of, kind of world. And for nomads, I think Andrew has a much easier time than you do. Way easier time. Because for him, it's like, I just need to convince you that you should care about your life. <laughs> I just need to conv- I just need to convince you to like have some freaking insurance when you're like I don't know climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay, <laughs> like that's what I need to explain to you with a, you backpacker. <laughs> so in in your case, you need to make me understand what it is I'm going to be paying three hundred dollars an hour, one hundred or one dollar an hour. Like it's it's really con- consultation based. So if I don't feel like you know you're speaking to me, resonating with me, I'm not going to click. And I'm going to probably end up with some lawyer or like someone's father's lawyer or whatever, or the accountant who's going to just milk me dry. You know, like this is just kind of how a lot of people, unfortunately, in every industry kind of work. Like they try to like I know people in the design industry, like Fiverr, you know, the developers and things like that. Like they'll be like, I want to add a gallery to my page. Oh, man, that's really tough. That's going to cost you an additional thousand dollars. (laughs) <laughs> it's just how it is. <laughs> Chris knows all about that. <laughs> like we were talking about this the other day. Like, it's just, how do we avoid these traps, right? And I love how with the website, we just said, okay, you know what? No big words. Number one. Number two. Which is a huge challenge for me. <laughs> yeah, have, good luck with that. <laughs> so uh, basically, guys, in summary, you click on the page, you come down, and it's like pain point. Select the, the problem that you have. And it was like, well, I have a team. I got to pay salaries. Great. Okay. Here's what we can avoid. You go down. So basically everything is a branching storyline. Who does that? Like taxes is not a choose your own adventure game. Taxes is a game that you do not want to get into. (laughs) So, you know, this is why I feel like having this human experience. And I love how you were able to, you think it's tough, but you've done a great job explaining a lot of these concepts to me. So what we want to do is guys, we won't go too deep right now, but ultimately when you go from the top of that page to the bottom of that page, you're gonna not just come out with a better tax plan or a better uh, or a, a great consultation. You're gonna come out understanding taxes a little more. So similar to what Andrew was doing painstakingly with those over a hundred dictionary terms and everything that he did there, instead of enjoying his life in Brazil, he's over there uh, making torturing Brazil. <laughs> yeah, I just got one word just listening to you. I just realized that's not in the dictionary yet. <laughs> So, guys, uh, I want to summarize here, but uh, real quick, by the end of the year, Crystal, where do you want to be with Nomad Tax? Because uh, you've got business. What have you learned so far, and uh, where, where do you think you're going to go? And by the way, my hat's off to you as well for like pivoting into this whole crazy visual product design idea, which we haven't even like tested yet. We don't even know it's going to work. Like, what do you mean I can't just list my services and their prices? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I mean, I think we've had some really great ideas to come out of this that we haven't even talked of, you know, uh, that I hadn't even thought about, you know, had always been like sort of my pain points in the back of my head. And we had an amazing call with Naraj as well, um, you know, talking about where we can take, um, you know, so we're all about the client experience, right? We want to have a better client experience and, you know, how can we facilitate a better client experience maybe through, you know, building an actual like client platform. Um, and having automation tools that make it not only easier from the client side, but make it easier from, from our side, um, you know, from the user side, um, you know, so, so that we can better serve our clients, right? We're spending less time doing, doing the minutia. Um, so that's, that's really exciting. You know, we've talked about, you know, crowdsourcing ideas on that. Um, you know, so, so I think that that's, that's obviously sends me into another anxiety wheel of, you know, a place where I'm very uncomfortable. Um, but if you know me, you know, I have a habit of, of stepping into spaces where I'm not comfortable and figuring them out. So um, I think that that's going to be exciting to see what we can do with automation to help, you know, not only our, our, our users, but our clients. Um, and then, you know, build a better, build a better, um, build a better platform for everybody. Well, Niraj, uh, Michael, uh, the only thing standing between you and, and Crystal right now is Ritika's video window. So you can, you can just hop over and help her automate. <laughs> what do you guys think of, of automating something like taxes? Like, uh, did that cross your mind when you were doing Maker Minions or PandaFlow, guys? No, no. Taxes is, is one of the, uh, you know, like 
pretty complicated stuff that nobody knows, yeah. but needs to get automated. Have you, you know, in the US, if you have to file and if you're a small business and you have to deal with 1099 and all kinds of taxes and all kinds, it's crazy. I mean, it takes hours and hours and hours, right? And half the time you don't know what you actually don't know. And then you have to have an expert so you can automate a lot of these, you know, expenses, uh, filing like regular state taxes or county taxes. I don't know. There's so many taxes you need to file. And sometimes you just don't know a lot of things and a lot of things could be automated. Uh, you know, in, in PandaFlow, we are also, you know, currently helping other people doing like transactions, automations and things like that, receipt also automation and things like that. So that if you're an SMB or a solo entrepreneur, you just don't have to deal with it. Say, hey, just automate everything and give it to uh, Crystal and she's going to handle, you know, all of the, like the filing things. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty interesting uh, area to automate. It's actually, you know, like, uh, and you can save a lot of time. I think for like small business owners too, you could automate things like the quarterly payments that for the, a first time small business owner that will trip you up and <laughs> get you into trouble. Uh, because I you call don't it the, there. yeah, I call it the, the S because it's a self-employment taxes. I call it like the SE sticker, t sticker shock. Like they just don't even know about it, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, there's a lot of room to make uh, mistakes. I know like the first time, you know, I didn't file the tax correctly and I got an $170,000 tax, like a kind of a thing from an IRS. I'm like, holy cow, that was my first business. And that's the, that's, you know, because I didn't file it correctly. It's not that I, you know, I didn't pay. It's just that I didn't file it correctly. And it was just in insane. And it, it could be, it, it, you know, if you don't do the paperwork correctly, I mean, it could, you could be in a lot of trouble. So, uh, Michael, can we maybe like next time that happens for your eyes, set up a system where once that report arrives, it automatically just gets directly delivered to Crystal. Yeah, these are the kind of stories we were talking about when we're like, why do we how do we make people care about taxes and, you know, ultimately, you know, lead them to, you know, using our services. It's like that's the kind of story that we're we're trying to tell. It's like, why should you care about taxes? Because otherwise you're going to get a hundred and seventy thousand dollar notice in the mail. And you're going to be like, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> there should be like two testimonials on the page, but one should be great product. We love talking to Crystal. Second one is, we didn't talk to Crystal soon enough. <laughs> it was very terrible. <laughs> we have so, plenty of those stories to tell, I promise you. But yeah, it's actually crazy how um, with, with um, like when we talk about automation, I noticed like so many of these examples that I see on Twitter have nothing to do with like service industries. It's just very like no code tools. Hey, you could take it into Integromat and you could do this other thing. It's like, okay, to what end? just to do something cool, you know, like, and then when I looked at PandaFlow, dude, Niraj, like your team is, is nuts. Like the level of advanced API integrations and stuff. I was like, can we have, a, instead of just API integrations, can we like move into like restaurant integration? Like, like, in, like, instead of describing the API, describe the industry or describe the actual, you know, thing you're integrating, that kind of thing. So that got really interesting for me, but Crystal, uh, continued success. Um, and uh, I, I think that your product is super valuable. Um, and I think that, you know, it would be such a disservice to just put like pricing structures. Pricing structure number one, for $100, you get this, $200 and $300 like that. I will never do that to you. So I'm going to make you suffer as much as I have to <laughs> like, until this product comes together. So thank you. Uh, I want to end with the sponsors who, without whom this would not have been possible, guys. Uh, and there's so many of our sponsors who just because of the time zones, <laughs> like it's impossible for me to get everyone together. So, uh, I mean, the 12 of us being here together right now is just incredible. And to everyone viewing on YouTube, um, I mean, you guys just took a leap of faith with me. Um, someone you don't know, uh, and you believed in me and said like, let's, let's make this happen. Uh, Michael, this kind of like start off on that, you know, glorious day. I just put that tweet on the page. You're like, yeah, I'll count me in. Um, and I was like, oh, great. Let's talk about this. Uh, Chris, same with you, man. Like just coming in from JetBoost, uh, Niraj, PandaFlow. Like you mean like, of course PandaFlow has to be a part of it. And I was like, wow, okay. Like, okay, this got serious really fast. <laughs> so uh, that little fun idea became something that I would never have imagined. I knew it would, it would like bring us together, but I didn't think that it could create that kind of value. Um, I just want to uh, hear a little bit about what your experience was like, kind of watching us 
crazy sons of bitches out here, <laughs> like, like doing these sessions, these, I know you guys have been watching hours of our videos, which is amazing. Like, thank you for taking the time. Uh, what's been like kind of watching something like this happen in an OCO space? It's been crazy. I, I don't know how you guys have done it. I mean, I thought I was uh, taking on too much or, or working too many hours and you guys put me to shame. So um, it's been inspiring for sure to see this much dedication to getting it right. Um, and no offense to the rest of the no code, no code world because I, I do love it, but you guys really have set a new standard that um, a no code product is really just a good product. Um, and you don't have to cut corners or you know have a, a, a design that's not up to par. Like you guys have really literally gone all the way to making um, outstanding products and you just happen to be doing it with no code tools. So that's, that's pretty amazing. That's why I got behind this in the beginning. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris, what was it like for you? You know, I, I think what I'm most impressed with is just seeing the level of collaboration between all of the different products. You know, e every single one of these has benefited by being a part of this group and just hearing the stories of, you know, what somebody took away from swipe files or from, you know, uh, insured nomads or all of these different products, how they helped build each other to be even greater products. To me, that's, that's the most impressive part of the rumble that I've seen. Thank you so much. Uh, Niraj. Yeah, you've, uh, you know, absolutely inspired. I'm like really, really great to see all these companies and you know one of the funny things uh, at least you know a great thing about this uh, particular is all of this business idea is an actual business idea this could actually generate money and yeah. be a business and be big at some point you know so this is great like so out of nowhere like random people came out of nowhere and created this, this amazing thing out of nowhere using no code tools and making an actual business. And some of you are already generating revenue, which is just insane. So it's really, really great to see that. Awesome. Uh, Michael, Codeless Ventures is something that also came out of this whole situation, right? <laughs> Starting this thing together. Um, what's, the, what's your plans with Codeless Ventures? I feel like you're a rumbler number nine. <laughs> Except I didn't build anything, but yeah, other than that. <laughs> um, yeah, this has been great. This is exactly what I was uh, looking for. I wanted to, with Codeless Ventures in general, I want to get behind products that are just great products. And I do want to focus on the no-code space because I want to continue to elevate those products that, like I said, they're great because they're great, not because they were made without code. And that's exactly what this rumble has, has uh, shown. So after this, I want to continue to find uh, more products that, you know, stand out and are one of a kind products like what you guys are doing and in, invest in those. I think there's a lot of, um, you know, there's already a lot of great investment going on, you know, getting behind no code tools. And that's awesome. And we need that. Um, but I want to kind of play on the product side for a little bit. Yeah. And I think there's one thing we're missing here. I think the products are great investing in them. But right now we're kind of in a world with conferences podcasts and kind of like hackathons like there needs to be something in between where like we can bridge the gap between these makers uh, very easily so they don't necessarily have to they can be location independent and if this proved anything is that it doesn't matter what time zones or what pandemic or what's happening out there like people can actually still come together if you just give them the right format so i think launching codeless ventures and the first investment the first opportunity which to my knowledge is the first time that this much money eight thousand dollars is put down for something of this caliber in the no-code space without any kind of structure, without any, this is a real investment. This is not just like, I'm just giving out $8,000 as charity or something. Like this is legitimately like, how can we do this? And then you and I talked about like Codeless Ventures being the key primary investor like during each year where it's like, we'll just find new interesting ways of like supporting everybody. How do you feel about like kind of breaking Codeless Ventures into maybe two parts where it's like, we invest in no-code products and we invest in no-code opportunities that enable those products. Like I think no-code rumble just came out of nowhere. I'm sure that if we, this could in inspire other people to come up with even better ideas, like the 100 days of no-code that Max Haining is doing, uh, which you know he's been also uh, super kind to, to work with us as well. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, and I think to your point, that's what creates things like this rumble. So um, the more we can get behind 
you know, those types of opportunity builders, uh, the better the whole community will be for sure. Guys, the only thing I'm pissed off about is that I can't have another 10 hours with all of you. Thank you so much for digging deep with me today. This was our first demo session. Um, and I think that uh, no code the rumble can actually become something that goes on for years to come. And people are going to look back and be like, look at all these knackered faces, all these people, like how hard they fought to do this. So uh, without further ado, okay, before you go, dude, yes. just, I just pop something in Slack. Have a quick look. Okay. Just see? a quick note from all of us. That's all. You see? There your screen too, so everybody can see. What? Oh, come on. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my God. Yeah, not, I was not expecting this. Oh my God, guys. Thank you so much for this. That's nice the ninth seat. rumbler right there in the bottom left. <laughs> <laughs> Chewbacca is my favorite mascot. Oh my God, guys. This is, oh, dude, this is amazing. I'm going to read. I'm, I will cherish this forever. Um, guys, for me, the, my whole life has, has been about finding great people and finding some crazy way of like pushing them forward and doing something. That, I'm, I'm usually very private, so that's why a lot of you don't even know me. So I, I haven't put a lot of my content or my life out there, but this No Code Rumble really just pushed me out of my own comfort zone too um, and allowed me to just kind of use my abilities in less of the private, private corporate world and be more open like this with the community. And I just, that, that's why I actually did the PlayStation in the beginning is just like, if I put this out there, will it resonate with the people? Like, will they kind of want to jump on that wagon with me? And you guys did. Um, I will continue fighting to the death for all of you. Um, and I want to, right here, putting it on, again, putting it on wax. Um, we are going to continue uh, with the newsletter, with everything. Again, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jens, the Viking, uh, helping me kind of get to the bottom of like which newsletter I need to use, uh, newsletter tool, everything. We're going to be setting this up. So May 1st, every single month, we're going to follow up with these rumblers, with these makers. And whether even it's a small update, like Corey just added a, you know, swipe file. Quentin just is this other thing. You know, um, Steven just added his build. Uh, Michael just invested in some other crazy fucking product. <laughs> we're going to be, we're going to be following everybody and, and giving everyone a chance to shine. I will be organizing uh, rumble sessions uh, with the sponsors individually. Niraj was the first. Uh, I'm still, I've just been trying to find the time for everybody to uh, kind of get everyone in the room um, and uh, kind of talk about what they're doing and how they've been so helping us. Every one of the sponsors has been so kind to kind of offer Something general for all the rumblers, a service, an opportunity, like PandaFlow, for example, offering everybody a few months of uh, their pro accounts. Chris has been offering JetBoost, Sonnen, um, and then offering to the winner of the rumble, although we're all winners, um, offering them um, a bigger prize that would kind of motivate them to keep going. So we want to make sure that this, this kind of pressure cooker event that we've organized together uh, as a team continues pressuring you to build great products and great opportunities. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for believing in me and believing in each other, most importantly. This couldn't have happened if you didn't. Um, if you just kind of, you could have walked away at any time. There were people that did walk away. Um, and you know, like we all stayed here until the very end and we're gonna go for another month and then for years to come. So I wish you all the best on your journeys. Thank you for letting me be a part of yours. And uh, we, I can't wait to finally see that launch uh, icon go up on May 1st for all these products so people can start testing and for the ones that are ready for alpha testing guys who are going to be putting it on no code rumble go to twitter.com slash no code rumble go to rumble.pro the new website's coming out May 1st too so you can see all our sessions you're going to be able to see uh, what these products are we're recording short intro videos with each of the makers so you can understand what you're going to be voting in um, I think for so many people are just so shocked by what we did here so like for them they need kind of like an intro to get, kind of ease them in so we're going to be organizing that and if we, and any of un, one of us inspired you to create your products, then we've already won. So thank you again, guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you, Zako. Thanks, thanks, guys. Yes. Thank guys, you. One, one request. Uh, stream is <laughs> over. We have to do, uh, this is the, I don't think we'll ever, all of us, be able to get together like this. We gotta do a screenshot. So, Brady Bunch screenshot? Yes. I already took one. But yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> All right, guys. Three, two, Why one. Are you Get excited. <laughs> one, two, three. Oh, dude. You guys have no idea what this means to me. No idea.
I'm, I'm away uh, from my family right now. I can't see them. I can't even fly to them right now. I've been traveling, just working with my teams, working with everybody, and you have no idea how... Dude, it is live, just to let you know. I know. They can watch it. Oh, okay, cool. Fine. <laughs> so, uh, guys, and for everyone watching, thanks again. Uh, if we, We'll be answering questions if we missed anything, and see you next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man, so much. See you, man. All the rest of you guys. Take care. Stay safe. Oh, you guys don't want to leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like awesome. everybody's just dropped off. <laughs> Who's going to be the last one? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it together. <laughs> I think we need one more screenshot to make them jealous. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, guys, you missed out on the fun. <laughs> Here we go. Three, two. <laughs> I think I showed the middle finger instead of the pointed finger. <laughs> Now it's the three of us. Now it's the three of us. One, <laughs> two, three. Okay. <laughs> if Let's it see. was the if it was the middle finger, please don't post that. It's like really late in the night for me. This was so. super inspiring. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's like my oh, my my functions are not like functioning for the other moment. So. Oh my god. All right. Cool. Thanks, Sako. I think you yeah, need to go get you. some sleep. You, because you it's, it's like one for me it must be 2 30 for you it's 2 44 actually see you don't care about me enough you don't you can't keep track of my time zone <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, thank you thank you dude for, yeah. for all of this thanks I hope. yeah thank you so much dude that, that yeah. image that was enough to do that that was that was nuts dude thank you so much and you brought chewy into it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, take time to read all of those. Oh, I will. I will. I'm sure. Um, well, when when uh, when are we uh, doing our next session? <laughs> yeah, that's the question I have to. Uh, Ritka, let's do let's do Monday for sure. Uh, Monday definitely. I'm gonna take a little break. Uh, uh, the, yeah, the you should. My, my yeah, I'm just I've been literally like on no sleep back to back. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, and for Quentin, uh, if you wanna. Uh, I would just say the content needs a little bit of work on your side. If you can work on that a little bit, um, yeah. you're good. Yeah. Um, we'll just make the tweaks, uh, make the responsiveness and stuff. You know, we've been changing a lot of things in the website, so we'll work on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, was, I, I mean, I was uh, mainly joking here um, because oh, I know. I, I can't know. stop working, dude. Like, I, I, don't <laughs> work on, like, I don't care. Throw me in a desert. I'll, I'll turn to last week. Don't worry. No, I know you, you. You've done a lot of work, and you need to have some rest right now. But uh, and and by the way, I know I have to do some work on the platform too. So uh, I'll be doing that in, in you know in a in a in the following days. Uh, but of course, uh, I would uh, be glad to have your help on some stuff like responsiveness, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but but we'll 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 chat on Slack for that. It's it's nuts to me that someone in Paris, someone in Thailand, and someone in Bangalore are like, having a conversation with just them. Freaking hell. <laughs> like, Ritika, were you expecting that? <laughs> no. No, because I mean I thought I thought like you were talking after the live yeah. went off. And then he was like, hey, no, but the live's not gone. And then when it actually went off, everybody dropped off along with it. I was like, wait, that wasn't part of the plan. But anyways, all right, the so I'm gonna sign off. Uh but have a good rest of the weekend, you guys. Oh, yeah. And by the way, Kritika, uh, I know you pinged me on, on Twitter uh, about uh, some Chrome extensions or something like yeah. that. And yeah. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I completely forgot about it. So I'm sorry. No, um, okay. But I will, I, will, I, will, I will respond for sure. <laughs> no worries. I was just curious to see what you guys had as your extensions. Because someone asked me on a call one day, like, what are all these cool extensions you have? Like, what do they do? So I actually sat and like wrote them all down. So I thought it might be helpful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will respond for sure. We should build an extension for finding extensions. <laughs> it's gonna be yeah, like a- or, or like just a website for like the <laughs> best extension. We should yeah. find a maker in India and in Bangalore in a village what? who just made an extension. <laughs> like each of them <laughs> on no good, <laughs> on, on Earth. <laughs> oh, you, guys are, you guys are awesome. Where'd right. you go? Yeah. Thanks, man. We will talk on Monday.
Bye, guys. Bye, Bye Kadika. Bye. See you, Sarkis. See you, Sarko, my man. Cheers. My friend. Cheers. Great. Oh, nice let's have a session. <laughs> <laughs> screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. This is all going on Twitter. This is for the record. Dude, I, uh, how did it feel? Wait, wait. How did it feel seeing other people's reaction for Notepad Mentors? Yeah, it was, it was nice. It was really nice. It was awesome. But I, it? Yeah, but I know, I know for a fact that they were kind of uh, all blown away by the design and, and, you know, video integration, animation, and stuff like that. Um, so uh, I know I have to, you know, work a little more on the content and, and the content being the mentors um, mm. and, and, and everything in their page. Uh, so, so thank you uh, anyway for, uh, you know, uh, implementing all these, uh, those crazy ideas into a super nice um, a website. And I know they, they were uh, kind of, yeah, blown away by what they saw. I think the idea of, uh, was just as mind blowing because it, it, like execution plus that idea, they, they kind of saw the picture. And I have to tell you that invite only basis that we came up with, that is the shit. I'm telling you, like, like um, all these others, like, okay, uh, reserve your spot or something. It's like, no, no, you don't have to worry. The platform's open. But the only way you're going to become a mentor <laughs> is like if one of these people believe in you. You know, I think as a mentor, if someone doesn't believe in you, then then how are they going to make someone else believe in something? You know, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So. Uh, can... But 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 uh, I know we we have. I mean, uh, we have something very special. We have something. Uh, um, very kind of unique, but it's very simple so far. And uh, we, I, 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 you know, see in the future a lot of things that we can do to make this a killer thing. Um, but I but this, this means a lot of work is ahead. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Um, but I feel like, um, I feel like what we need to do is just take it like that. Uh, you need to take it to the next level, man. Like, really take the next level in terms of, like, not just invite basics. What are we doing about, like, once they're in, how can we make it a little more special? I, I think the video recording, the thing that happened, that should just be where it's like, hey, you're already on the platform. Like, not the, not the sign up, but after, like, you get in and you have to record a video, how do you encourage them? The video is already recording. It's like, hey, just talk into that camera. Don't do this professional video where it's like, I'm a mentor, look at me, you know, like I'm gonna wear my suit real quick, you know, like, hello everyone. You know, like, it's just, it's personal. It's like, you're in your room right now. Talk, guys, my name is Chris. This is what I'm doing, you know, like plus and 60 seconds, go. Like that, I don't see. That person personalization, I don't see at all. Um, yeah. so, uh, dude, the fact that you would go that far and think about this stuff, it just shows how much you love the product and I love you for loving the product. <laughs> thanks thanks dude and i love all of you thinking about me when you're in bed <laughs> for christmas <laughs> it's like i just went straight to bed and i started thinking of soccer i was like okay <laughs> oh my god no <laughs> uh, dude, all right uh, and god bless you yeah you too man and thanks again for all of this and uh i think i i forgot to thank uh every every everyone uh uh you know every other rumblers and every uh sponsors because all of the sponsors that were present today are actual uh, mentors on the platform and i didn't thank them for that so Dude. i will reach out to them we're still recording so i'm going to take this session this this little moment right now and i'm going to send it to them <laughs> quentin feels terrible he's going to be personally putting a one month apology video on the website when you first arrive you're a new mentor by the way if i haven't thanked you before <laughs> i can build that interaction very easily <laughs> well, if you have time to spare. <laughs> I'm not really busy, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot, man. Really. And speak soon. Speak soon. Good night. Have some rest. Cheers. Yes. <sighs> and then there was one. Guys, to everyone viewing in, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for retweeting, for posting on Facebook, for posting on Instagram, for joining our website, for subscribing. We got over a thousand subscribers in such a short amount of time. What the hell? What's wrong with you all, you people? Like, <laughs> what's wrong with all of us? 
I think coming together like this, guys, is the purpose of no code. If no code can maintain this culture, in my vision, in my mind, uh, it can become one of the most powerful industries in the world. Um, I think eventually no code just gonna, is just gonna disappear. This idea of like this distinction between no code and this, like that's just not gonna happen anymore. It's gonna be products, like what Michael said, right? Um, a great product is great because of the relationship it has with you. Not because, hey, you know, like uh, it's made with no code. Like someone came to me and said, Sako, I'd like to build this product. I said, great, what's the experience? Like, well, it's like this thing made with no code. Like it's a search with no code. And just using that, I just said, guys, like no one cares if it was no code or it was made with magic dust or whatever. It's like at the end of the day, what relationship do I have with it? Um, and uh, I've had so much fun working on these products. It's been super exhausting, <laughs> make no mistake. It's been exhausting as hell, but meaningful as hell. And uh, I was just thinking like, okay, one month we're going to build it and move on. But oh my God, like just the, ins the inspiration we had, the talks, the discussions, like we've done over a hundred hours of sessions in YouTube. And each one of those videos like are just filled with gems of like a, a serendipitous moment. Uh, someone just stepped in, had a collaborative call, talk, discussion with us, you know, like Nicole just stepped in from Costa Rica, like, this needs to continue for months, if not years, if not decades to come. You know, this needs to transcend us. You know, it, uh, we're not doing this for us. We're doing this for our kids and their kids. You know, like we need to go way, way beyond. And I told this to Rumblers too. Like, what can we do to just take it to the next level? And, and we did. And we couldn't have done it without all that support. And so I want to end with, guys, first of all, taking a quick look at, uh, taking a quick look at the questions here. Uh, you guys are so kind here. Look at this. The voice first industry is just as helpful and collaborative as the no code space. It's awesome. Absolutely. Um, get your master mentor. You can only book certain people if you're a verified, me uh, verified mentor. That's awesome. Uh, like master mentors that like Kyle, shout out to someone else from Atlanta. I've worked with Kyle on, a, uh, on, on rideshare, amazing platform. Uh, that brings the rideshare community together. Again, we found each other again because of the, you know, the PlayStation prototype or something else that I did. And it's just like, it's crazy. Again, when you build something from your heart, you put it out there in the universe, people care, people react, they get into it. Um, so, and Kyle uh, and Nick, uh, the co-founders, thank you for the opportunity. Um, for, I think, gating the master mentor, Kyle, is a fantastic idea of like, you know, not, not making sure that it doesn't become saturated. Right, making sure that uh, making sure that you can only access them if you've have if you've had enough sessions. Like making that a gamification, like uh, you know, a concept is just amazing. And you know, you and I with rideshare, you and I know all about <laughs> gamification <laughs> and like making everything interactive. So thank you for that. For thank you for that uh, nugget, uh, Ryan, Sarah, Elizabeth. I'm sorry, guys, we didn't have a chance to really connect with you during the during the. Uh, session. We were just so busy demoing the product as fast as possible. Thank you for stay, sticking with us this whole time. Um, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, on the final note, guys, uh, we're going to be following up with the voting. We're going to be following up with uh, the Rumble website coming out May 1st. The uh, newsletter is going to be going out. I'm working really hard on getting that right. Um, and what we're going to do is make sure that um, each month, uh, we're going to give new um, people, uh, new makers, an opportunity to actually use our platform to go to the next level. Uh, we're going to discover ways for them to maybe use our newsletter or our Twitter page or whatever to like promote their products to that are unique um, and really help the no-code makers understand that really we want you to create products, not just tools, not, the, not just experiments, as, as great as those are, right? We want you to get inspired by prototypes, by experiments, by tools and then use that to just unlock your dreams, unlock your opportunities. And every year these tools just get simpler and faster and more efficient. Um, and if you can feel your product, you can have a relationship with it instead of just building something because, hey, it was easy to build or because I can, but you actually do it because it's who you are. It's a part of what you are. Then you will succeed. Like these men, like these uh, sponsors and these makers, I have succeeded in life in many of their fields and are going to continue to succeed. I have full faith in that. And if we continue to support them and get on those sessions and, you know, keep an eye on them 
like a hawk, making sure that, you know, the moment they want to fall behind, we step in and say, guys, push forward. This can happen. I think this can become one, one of the best platforms for makers. And I'm just privileged uh, to have the opportunity to be a, play a small part in that. Thank you again for tuning in and see you on the next session. Cheers. Bye, Gishesh.